I'm attempting to build my dream sneaker collection starting from complete scratch. I'm doing this because 26 months ago, I found one of, if not my favorite sneakers at my local flea market, the origin story Jordan 1s in a toddler size. But those shoes still would surprisingly sell for well over $100. So I thought, if I can turn a profit on a pair of shoes, why not use that money to fund my own personal sneaker collection? So that's exactly what we're hoping to do here, starting with those exact same Jordan ones that we found at the flea market over two years ago, but this time, hopefully in my size. And my absolute favorite part is we'll be buying those Jordans and every other pair of shoes that we're adding to the sneaker collection with absolutely no money out of pocket. So welcome to my new series that I'm calling Into the Sneakerverse. So I need to give you an idea of how this series is going to work. If you're familiar with the channel, you know that I am a full-time shoe reseller. I go to thrift stores, flea markets, places like that, look for shoes that I can resell online. So for this series to build our sneaker collection, I will be strictly using profits from shoes that I find at thrift stores, flea markets, wherever we venture off to into the series, I'm going to buy those shoes, clean them up if necessary, list them on mainly eBay and Poshmark. We'll see if we dabble in some other platforms and I'm gonna take the profits from those shoes after they sell and invest into shoes for the collection. Now, before we get into the search for some profitable shoes, I do need to give a shout out to three channels that inspired this. First off, Seth Fowler also has a sneaker collection series. Retro Rick does a similar thing with video games and Phoenix Resell, who's also in video games. All of those channels I'll link down below. They have amazing collection series that are definitely huge inspirations to what I will be doing moving forward with this series. So go check them out. And with that being said, let's get into it. All right, so we're starting to search off at a Play-Doh's closet because I saw on their Instagram they're doing some huge Earth Day event. Carly got a text this morning saying that they're releasing like 100 pairs of shoes today, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, there's a couple in mind that um, I'm looking for specifically, so hopefully we'll find those and let you guys know what those what those are. Uh, Carly's gonna go look for the I'm, specific shoes. I have a mission. Carly's on a mission, and they have a ton of shoes behind the counter, which is kind of annoying because you kind of gotta ask to look at them one by one, but we'll see. I'll let you guys know if we find anything. First pair that I spotted were these New Balance 550s. These are a super clean colorway. They wanted $50. I wasn't quite sure about the price, needed to look those up, but I went ahead and put those in the basket for the time being. And then I caught these Hulk Vans for only $14. That's typically a great price, even in this condition for collaboration vans. Then on the back wall, I spotted these on clouds. I felt like $35 was a pretty decent price. Had to double check that model. So went ahead and put that in the basket. There was some, some pretty cool Converse over here, but I just didn't feel like they'd be uh, fast enough movers for the series. I wanted to find some shoes that I could sell quicker um, to get our budget rolling. And these Vapor Max were a little too expensive just like most shoes here, like these uh, Tyler the Creator, I believe, Converse. They were 50 bucks, not quite worth it that price in women's sizing. I noticed the colors on these Pumas up on top were pretty cool, so I went ahead and pulled them down to take a look at them. They were only 24 bucks, and I noticed they were a collaboration with Animal Crossing. Uh, these were super cool. There was no way that I was gonna leave these behind for $24. Shouldn't be a huge profit, but I, like I said, I'm not leaving those behind. Also spotted these SpongeBob vans. These ones were $20. They were a bit dirty, but I've definitely sold this model for good money in the past. Wanted to show you guys these uh, Toon Squad LeBrons from the new Space Jam movies, movie. They were too expensive to pick up, especially in the size, but I, I just wanted to show them to you. They were pretty cool. And then the last pair that was just again, a little too expensive because they were grade school size were these reverse blue game Jordans. Unfortunately, I had to leave those behind. All right, so we just finished up at Play-Doh's. It was actually pretty successful. I missed out on one pair that I was really hoping to get, but I'll, I'll talk about that when we get home. Carly kind of popped off with some uh, pants. I did. I found seven pairs of pants. Yep, for like cheaper than Goodwill prices, which speaking of Goodwill, there's one right across the street. So we'll see if we can uh, find some more profitable shoes to add to our fund. This right here was a huge, huge find. They're in kind of rough condition, but these Nike Cortez and the Forrest Gump colorway always sells really, really well for me. So I'm definitely picking those up at 12 dollars i also found these new balance 990s in the uh in the men's section for 14 bucks this is this is a great find again another one that is going to get the budget off to a great start so always always love finding these shoes especially at that good of a price then we rolled over to the kids section i want to show this to you i didn't pick any of these up but they had a bunch of retro jordans and some pretty cool colorways uh, but unfortunately the sizes weren't all that great and the condition was even worse so had to pass on all those but still cool to see and i found these nike air max 720s with a little rough heel drag and for 16 dollars i'm probably not going to be able to profit on those so i left those behind 
but I did find these Nike Air Max 90s in the prequel colorway for 12 bucks. These were a women's size, but uh, I really like the colorway on these, so I decided to uh, go ahead and grab those. And then to round off the trip, we got some toddler Jordan 1s. I believe these were only $7. Pretty cool uh, gray black colorway, 7 bucks. Always a good find for some, uh, some toddler Jordans. And I also picked up these toddler Nike Prestos. This is probably going to be a slower mover, but for $7 in the like brand new condition decided to pick them up and then i ended up leaving these jordan 11s behind honestly can't remember why probably just in rough condition all right so we made it back from play-dohs and goodwill i'll probably go over the goodwill purchases first um we picked up one two three four five we got five pairs of shoes at goodwill for 55 dollars and 85 cents um, honestly, the Goodwill stop was probably a little bit better uh, profit margin wise than the uh, Play-Doh's closet stop because we got some really good stuff there. For starters, right off the top, these New Balance 993s were only $14. They do have a little, you know, dirty suede on the toe box. Good, excellent pre-owned condition. These would sell over $100. I think on the low end, considering the tread is really, really good. And they are overall a pretty clean pair of shoes. $60 on the low end, so probably like a $45 to $50 profit. Next up, we got some Forrest Gump Cortez. These ones are pretty dirty. I'll show you guys. I'll link up in the top of the screen my cleaning process for white shoes like this, but I will briefly go over that in the video to give you guys an idea of how it works. But I know these look super dirty, but this is going to be a very, very easy cleanup. And I just picked up a pair of these at actually that same Goodwill two and a half, three weeks ago. And they sold within probably a week for $118 plus shipping over on eBay. So I'm hoping for around $100 for these, depending on how well they clean up. Next up, we got a couple kids shoes. Uh, luckily, when I got there, she was putting kids shoes out. Both of these were $6.99 a piece. We got some uh, black Prestos and some baby Jordan 1s. I did sell the exact same pair of Prestos in these uh, this toddler size. Uh, last week, I think they went for $31 on Poshmark. $7 was a decent pickup, should triple our money on that. And then these Jordan 1s, um, I'd imagine these will sell for around $40 um, on the high end, $30 on the low end. So another one that we will at least triple our money on. And then last pair that we picked up at the Goodwill were these Nike Air Max 90s. Um, I didn't look up comps on these, but it's just like a classic Nike model. They were only $12. I would be surprised if we couldn't at least sell these for $30 plus shipping. I'll probably soak these in with the uh, Forrest Gump Cortezes that we found just to uh, uh, just to brighten them up a little bit, but uh, still a decent find at 13 bucks. And then moving on to the Play-Doh's closet haul, we picked up 10 pairs of shoes. I don't know if I mentioned already, but I did have a 20% off coupon that I was able to use after you spend, I think like $400, they give you a 20% coupon. Uh, so I was able to use that on today's purchase. The pair that I was really hoping to get I wanted to get there at open so I'd get in and get first selection, but someone did beat us there. They had a pair of Post Malone Crocs that they posted on their Instagram and they're only $20. That would have been an amazing flip, but unfortunately we missed out on that. But I did get the second most important pair of those dunks. So I'm glad that we picked those up. Um, again, there's the receipt. We paid $222.74 for those 10 pairs of shoes. And again, we got some, some really nice stuff. Here's a closer look at those dunks. These ones are women's size eight as well, but this this like, crazy colorway is going to sell these very well. I did look up comps. Um, should get around $100 for these and they were only 55 tagged. So after the 20% off discount, just a little under 45 bucks for these. So another, you know, $40 profit on these. These were behind the counter. This is kind of like a sleeper brand. These were some uh, Echo Soft 7s and this yellow colorway is going to make these super easy to sell. The Echo Soft 7, I always list these at $49 plus shipping and they always sell really quick on both eBay and Poshmark and these were only $14. Then here's a pair that you saw. I didn't look up comps on these. I briefly did after we purchased them. Um, I did see some youth size of similar Animal Crossing Pumas selling for like $60. So like I just kind of bought these on a whim. They were $24. So after the 20% discount, a little under 20 bucks, uh, but these are a nice collab shoe, Animal Crossing. Since the kids' sizes were selling in the $60 range, I'm just gonna assume the women's on the low end will probably sell in that same ballpark. And then here's another one of the more higher end pairs that we picked up, these New Balance 550s. Did pay up a little bit. They were tagged at $50, so after the 20% discount, uh, this came down to 40 bucks. Uh, some were selling as low as $50 plus shipping, but I was confident to pick these up because there were no other size 11s listed. So we got a really good size. And then the few comps on the size 11 were like 85 to $90 plus shipping. So this should be another um, 30 to $40 profit. All right, here we got another uh, cheaper pair. Surprised at the pricing on these. These are Uggs, which is normally a brand that Plato's prices up a little bit. 
These were only 14 bucks and they were like the, the fur slippers. These are a super popular model. So I'd imagine these will sell for around like $40 plus shipping. Now here's another pair that you guys saw these on clouds. I can't, I think these are like the cloud swift model. They were $35. So after the 20% discount, that would be just a little under 30 bucks. Uh, but the tread was amazing. These will clean up really well. And I can imagine these will sell very fast. These will probably be one of our first sales. Um, I'm hoping to get like 60 plus shipping for them. So just under a double up, maybe like a $20 profit on these. Next, we got a really cool Vans collab, SpongeBob Imagination Vans. These ones are pre-owned and they do have a little bit of wear on them. I have sold this model in the past, but they were brand new in the box. And I think I got $100 for them. Um, so I'm pretty confident that the even in used condition, I should be able to get at least $50 plus shipping. They're only $20, so 16 after the discount. Another one that we should double our money on. Next, I picked up a pair of uh, a couple pairs of Converse. Prices were so cheap on these. And it is like the the red, white, and blue theme, and July's coming up. So these like these might these might move pretty quick. And I'm pretty sure that these were also priced pretty low. Yeah, these were fifteen dollars. If you can see that in there. Um, so after that discount, again, just over ten dollars. You know, I might sell these for thirty plus shipping. This is going to be at least a double up. So happy to pick these up, especially the time of the year. And the last pair of Converse, Carly actually found these and I don't think she would have let me leave without them. Uh, these ones are almost in brand new condition. The iridescent leather or rubber upper. These were 18 bucks, so probably around $15 after the discount. So still a really good deal on these. Again, probably list these around 49. And then the last pair that we picked up, I'm a sucker for Vans collaborations. Uh, these were in a little bit rougher condition, but they were only $14. So just over 10 bucks after that discount. Uh, but they're the Incredible Hulk with the toes showing and they weren't in terrible condition. So I had to go ahead and grab them. I don't know exactly what these will sell for, probably like 30 plus shipping. So another uh, $15 profit we can add to the add to the fund. So there you have it guys, 15 pairs picked up on the first day of our brand new series. I think this was a very good day to start the challenge off. We found some really good stuff. I think this is going to add plenty of money to our fund. I'm going to get cracking on cleaning these up, getting started. I'll probably get a few listed today. And then I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to get those, uh, the Cortez is soaking to get them a little bit more white and more presentable. So we can get a little bit higher towards the top of the market when we sell those. So I'm going to get to work. <laughs> All right, so I actually finished photographing uh, everything we had except for the uh, the two that need soak. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those uh, put in the inventory and go upstairs and show you guys how I'm going to soak those white shoes. Hopefully they come out looking, uh, looking good. I'm excited. This stuff should sell for good money and everything should go pretty quick. So we'll see how we do. All right, so this is how we're cleaning the white shoes. Sorry, the lighting is absolutely terrible in here, but we're just gonna be using Dawn dish soap, some OxyClean White Revive and some baking soda. I've got them in this tub to soak. Just put a little bit of that in there. A little bit of the oxy clean and then a little baking soda and then i'm just gonna toss this in the shower fill this up with water and let this soak for probably a few hours scrub it down run it through the washing machine and then they should be good to go so far into the series, we are negative $278 in our sneaker fund. This is gonna be the first and only time that I'm investing my own money into the fund. I wanted to get the ball rolling pretty quick. So I wanted to go ahead and invest early and get those 15 pairs that I think that are going to get us just one step closer to taking home a pair of origin story Jordan ones. But again, we are not going to stop there. Let me know down in the comment section below what shoes you want to see added to the sneaker fund, whether it is an outlandish, crazy expensive pair of shoes or just an average everyday pair of shoes. If you want to see it in the collection, let me know down below. I'll be taking suggestions down there. And I have a feeling that we're going to get some sales rolling in pretty quick. So if the episode is already released, make sure to hit this thumbnail right here. And that'll take you straight to episode two. If not, it's going to be another video that I'm sure you will enjoy. But with that being said, that's going to wrap up episode one of In to the Sneakerverse. I'll see you guys in episode two when we get some sales rolling in. I'm at this thrift store looking for underpriced shoes that I can flip online and use those profits to start my very own sneaker collection, starting with the origin story Jordan ones. After last week, our shoe fund wasn't looking too great, sitting at a negative $278.59. But luckily, since then, we've had a whopping 12 sales roll in. <laughs> 
So before we start today's hunt for profitable shoes, let's go over our very first sales of my brand new series into the sneakerverse. Our very first sale was actually the Nike Air Max 90s. We paid $11.99 for them, and they actually sold fairly quick on Poshmark for $43. And on that, I had to pay $8.60 in fees, leaving us with $34.40 to add back into our shoe fund. Every single one of these sales are going to have shipping costs and fees, but to save you guys time, since we have a few sales to go here, I'm just gonna tell you the total price, and then I'll tell you how much money after shipping and fees that we're adding back into our sneaker fund. That being said, we also sold the Hulk bands for $39 on Poshmark. We sold the 4th of July style red, white, and blue Converse for $30. We sold the Ugg Fluff Yeah slippers for $39 over on Poshmark. We sold the New Balance 550s for $70, not quite as much as I was hoping to sell them for, but I was happy to get that money back in the fund. We paid $40 for those, so only about a $16 profit. We also sold the Toddler Jordan 1s. Those went for $30. The On Clouds that we picked up at Plato's Closet sold for $63. The Yellow Echo Soft 7s that Plato's Closet had priced at $14. We actually sold those for $49, a full price sale over on eBay. The only other toddler shoe that we picked up, those Prestos, those sold for $24.65 on eBay. And then the New Balance 993 threes. Those sold for $77 on eBay, leaving us with two more final sales, both of them the best sales of the first episode. First off, we sold the Nike Dunks that we got from Plato's Closet. We paid $50 for them. They sold for $118 on Poshmark. And then the sale of the day was definitely the Forrest Gump Cortezes. We picked those up at Goodwill for $11.99 and they sold for full price of $119. And the buyer actually paid over $50 to have them shipped to Australia. So all that added up together, we ended up having a gross sales price of $701.65. We did have to pay $144.95 in fees and shipping to get them to the buyers. So that's gonna leave us with $556.70 to add back into our sneaker fund, which was sitting at a negative $278.59. So oddly enough, adding our new money back into the fund, we're gonna be sitting at a positive $278.11. Somehow we managed to go from negative 278 to a positive 278. We've got plenty of money to go out and thrift some new shoes to hopefully continue growing the fun. So with that being said, let's hop into a thrift store. All right, so we're kicking off the hunt at a uh, local Goodwill. We have $278 in the budget. So let's hop in and see what we can add to our collection fund inventory. This Goodwill can be kind of a hit or miss right at open. So we're right here at open. So we're going to see what we can find today. These Nike Shocks Gravities caught my eye in the triple black colorway. This is typically a good model of Nikes, but they are $20. So I'm going to have to do some thinking on those. Down at the bottom, I see some Nike Element React 55s. They're only 13 bucks, not a bad price, but these are these are pretty dirty. And then also on the bottom shelf, I saw these Nike Stefan Janoski Maxes for $11. I've been having a lot of luck with uh, Janoskis lately, so I'm probably definitely gonna get these for $11. And up here, these Adidas look pretty clean, but 15 bucks, I, I don't know, that's probably a bit steep, but I'll, I'll still go ahead and look up comps on them. We still got plenty of money left in the fund. I also saw these denim Jordan 6s in the youth section. They're very small size, and as you can see, the denim's kind of worn on them, so ended up passing on those. And then these New Balances are a really good New Balance model, but $15. I'd rather spend my money elsewhere. And then I found some Air Force Ones in triple white colorway, but 25 is probably a bit much. Guys, this has got to be probably the best find of the series so far, I hope. These knee-high Converse always do really well. Kind of sucks they're missing the laces. I don't really know where to get laces that fit these, but especially with the patchwork on them, I'm pretty sure that's in right now. Uh, $25 is a really good price. Only other pair that I didn't mention were those orange Mizunos. I paid $13 for those, so we ended up getting four pairs at our first stop. So just finished up at the first Goodwill. Only picked up four pairs. I spent $75, I believe, $73.44. So we still have just over $200 left in our budget. So I think I've got another Goodwill and uh, Plato's Closet in mind that I'm gonna hit today. I really think this first stop was a great stop. I know it sounds like we paid up, but I just, I can't wait to show you guys some of the comps on the shoes that we picked up, especially those Converse. But with that being said, let's head on over to the next stop. 
I just pulled into Plato's Closet. They're about to open. They actually just sent out a text. I didn't know they were doing this today, but they're doing 50% off. It said select items. Who knows if it's shoes related. So I'm about to pop in once they open. And uh, last time we came, it was the same Plato's Closet. I got 10 pairs. If we can do that again today, that would be amazing. Uh, but I'm about to pop in. First place I go with this Plato's is their sneaker walls. Try to find if there's anything new that they've put out on the floor, anything cool. Uh, so I give this a quick glance, and the first pair that caught my eye was a pair of Brooks Adrenaline 21s. So they you know, typically underprice Brooks. These are only $12, so there's definitely a lot of money to be made on those, especially a newer model. These uh, Jordan 4s were $90. bucks. they are pretty cool, but I don't, just don't think I can make money on them. And kind of the same situation with these Jordan 12s in the, uh, what's that, gem red colorway. These were 95 and I just, not enough money to be made for those. And I turned around and I noticed these Jordan 1 lows in the, the section that's my size. And I really like this colorway. They're only $50. So I'm thinking about adding these to my sneaker collection, get the sneaker collection off the ground for such a good price. I also, you guys know, I can't come to a Play-Doh's and not walk away with some Disney Vans collabs. These 101 Dalmatians were $24 and they were just in like brand new condition. Same situation with these Vans slip-ons. These are the Disney Parks 50th anniversary, also $24. These are still being sold at the park, so I'm sure that these will be pretty fast movers for us. I also saw these SpongeBob Gigliotti. Don't even know what Gigliotti was, but they are $25. The clearance sticker is half off, but those just weren't quite selling for very much. Same with these Vapor Max. The Vapor Max have kind of gone down in price. These are only 35 bucks, but in the women's size, I had to leave them behind. These Jordan 13s were pretty cool, but again, they were a GS size only. They were $65, not a bad price, but I just can't make a lot of money. And then you guys know we had luck with the on clouds at the last Plato's Closet stop at only $20. That is an easy, easy pickup. And then we found another pair. I walked just down the aisle and there was some on cloud. These are the Roger Federer models. These were $35, paid up a little bit, but these should sell pretty quick. A newer model of on cloud. Last pair I took a look at were these 95s. They were on clearance for $35, but the sales just weren't really justifying the price. Just had a really solid stop at Plato's Closet. I'm really bummed out. I honestly thought we were going to add a pair of shoes to the collection already with those Jordan 1 lows. I love the colorway and they were my size, but um, I just Check the UPC and the UPC should be the same across all of the shoes that are that same uh, style and colorway and it was off so I'm about I'm about certain that they were fake so unfortunately I had to leave those behind but still managed to walk away with some good good stuff but I've got $81 left in the shoe fund I think I spent 125 in there 123 I got just over 80 bucks left in the collection fund so I'm gonna pop across the street to Goodwill and uh, hopefully we can find some more First pair that stand out to me are these Nike pocket knives. Not a super popular model, and they are $16, but these things are in like brand new condition. So definitely gonna think about these while I go through the rest of the shoes. Second pair, I found another pair of Janoskis. These are a camo colorway. Those are only $15. Probably definitely gonna pick these up. Then over here in the women's section, I found a pair of Taos, Taos, a brand that I do very well with in pre-owned condition, and these are brand new for $13, so that one is a no-brainer. Also found a pair of Timberlands in the women's section. These are 16 bucks, a little pricey, uh, but I'm gonna just double check comps on Timberlands before I say no to them. Also found some Air Max 97s. These were a men's size like eight and a half, and they were also only $16. That should be a, a nice little flip. Moving down the women's section, these Nike Air Max Teas stood out with the leather uppers. They're only 10 bucks. I've sold this model plenty of times before, so I'm probably gonna grab those. And then I noticed several running shoes in this section, a couple pairs of Brooks, but they all just had a little too much wear on them. These Asics, same situation, just not a, not a great model either. These Salomons looked really nice, but a huge tear on the uh, ankle right there, so definitely leaving those behind. These Vejas caught my eye really quick. I thought that this was going to be a good score, but a same situation. These are just really beat up, even for $10. That would have been like a $60, $70 shoe in good condition, but ha unfortunately had to leave them behind. But you should definitely keep an eye out for this brand if you are a reseller. Here's a pretty nice pair of Nike Zoom Pegasus for... I believe $14. I'm starting to realize that I'm probably not gonna have enough money to pick up everything at this store. I saw a pair of Doc Martens down on the bottom shelf. This isn't a great model and $16, probably a little too steep for these, especially with that heel drag. Uh, but as I was saying, I, I know I'm running out of money, so I'm just gonna have to figure out what I'm gonna be able to keep at this store because like these Nike running shoes were in excellent condition and only 12 bucks. Another pair of Element React 55s for 13. These were pretty clean. 
I wanted to grab all of these. I wanted to show you these though. These are Adidas, apparently. I don't know if these are just fakes that are using the Adidas logo, but I've never seen Adidas heels like that. Let me know down in the comments if those are real. Vincent Van Gogh Vans caught my eye. I've sold these for around $100 before, but these were 20 bucks and a women's size five. So I didn't feel like spending our budget on those quite yet. These Merrill hiking boots at $15 is a good pickup, but I just don't feel like they're gonna sell fast enough. I'd normally probably pick these up, but today I'm leaving them behind. And then these Rothy's caught my eye. Only $8. I've been seeing a lot of these lately. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but even at $8, uh, they were missing the size tag on the inside, but I'm certain they're real and the size is printed on the bottom. I still think this will be a good $30, $40 flip for us. These Converse were pretty cool. Had the apples on the side, only 10 bucks. Uh, another pair that I really wanted to pick up, but unfortunately, cart was getting pretty full and we only have $80. This is gonna be a tough decision. I don't know what I'm going to be able to leave and pick up. So as you saw, that last stop had more than we could definitely afford. So here's what we picked up at that last Goodwill. And then we'll briefly go over everything we picked up today. I definitely went with these Air Max 97s for only $16. I'm, I'm sure that these are gonna sell really quick. Just like the Air Max 90s from the last video, these would probably do very well for us. We picked up some Air Max Teas. I went ahead and grabbed these. I've sold this model plenty of times in the past and being like the, the leather upper, uh, just got more going for it. I went with the camo Nike Janoskis because I have been having a lot of luck with this model lately. These should sell really quick and they were also only 15 bucks. And then I was not going to leave behind a brand new pair of shoes. These Taos, Taos, however you pronounce it, always sells in like the 40 to $50 range pre-owned. So I'm excited to see what we can get out of these brand new condition. I've never sold them in brand new condition, but for only $13, had to grab them. And then the last two pairs that we went with, I went with the Rothy's. I'm sure that this will be a quick $30 to $40 flip from the $8 pickup. Um, definitely a good buy there. And then the last pair of shoes were these Nike Air Zoom Pegasus. I believe that I picked this exact same model up uh, a couple months ago and they sold pretty quick for about $40. So I was definitely happy to pick these up over the other ones that we decided to leave behind because I know I've sold this model in the past. And at this store, we spent $80 and 64 cents and that left us with 40 cents in our fund. So we pretty much nailed our spending budget today. Uh, that being said, let's go over the rest of the shoes that we picked up. Plato's Closet wasn't as exciting as I was hoping. We got the 50% off text, but it ended up just being on their clearance items. So just the stuff that they've been ha they had sitting there for a while. And I don't think I picked up anything that was on clearance, but I did get two pairs of on clouds. These were 35, these are the Roger model. And then I picked these up for 20. Then we got two pairs of Disney vans. This is the Disney 50th anniversary collection. These just came out. They're still selling these at the park. So these should sell quick. These were $24, didn't have a discount today. These were also $24. I'd imagine we can double our money on these. And then last pair were these Brooks Adrenaline uh, 21s, a newer model of the Adrenaline. These came out in 2021. Uh, the tread was really good and they were only 12 bucks. This should be another 50 to $60 plus shipping sale. And as I mentioned about the Jordan 1 Lowe's, I was wrong. I think that they were actually authentic. I double checked because I took a picture of the size tag and I was looking, I was comparing to the wrong size. So the UPC was actually correct on those, but I thought about going back, but if I would have went back, I wouldn't have picked up anything from the last Goodwill. I would have spent all the money on that and comps on those Jordan 1s were pretty rough. My friend Chris has a pair listed for a hundred and he's been sitting on them for several months. So I think at $50, probably not the best buy. So. I'm glad we ended up leaving those behind, but I do think they ended up being authentic. And then at our first stop of the day, we picked up a pair of Nike Shocks. Uh, I think this is Nike Shocks Gravity. I think that's what this model is called. Um, this Nike Shocks tend to do really well. I did pay up at $20 for these. Ex the sell through rate on this and the, um, the other Janoskis that we picked up were both well over 100%. That's why I was confident in paying up for them. Uh, should get around 50 to $60 for these. So a little over a double up. And then the same deal with these, didn't really pay up for them. They were $11, but they're gonna need some cleaning. I do think we'll probably get the same ballpark, 50 to $60 for these. And then I picked up a pair of Mizuno Wave Creations for $13. I've had a lot of luck with Mizuno in the past, especially the kinds that have the midsole like this. If you see the, the midsole that uh, has this design all the way to the front, those are like 100 plus dollar shoes. These still should get between 50 and 60 bucks. And then <laughs> I saved the best for last, the um, Converse Knee High Boots, I guess. Are these boots? Would you call these boots? I call them sneakers though. Okay, Converse knee-high sneakers. If you don't know, I'm gonna throw comps up on the screen. This 
I don't know about this exact same model. Uh, my friend Tim texted me after I sent a picture of this and he said that he sold a pair for $255. Not the same patchwork design. I don't know if this is gonna make them more valuable or less valuable. Um, only thing we gotta do with these, I need to find some laces. And unfortunately I spent all but 40 cents of our budget today. So I have to make a sale before I can purchase some laces. I don't even know where to find them. If you know where to find laces for a pair of shoes that has 20 eyelets, let me know down in the comments. I briefly looked on Amazon, but I couldn't quite find anything. I'm sure I'll find something eventually, uh, but we're gonna have to make a sale to purchase some shoelaces for these. But this is definitely the best find of the day. So as you know, we started today with three pairs in inventory, but over $278 to go out and source shoes that we can flip online to hopefully grow our sneaker collection fund. And we finished today off pretty strong. We spent all of our budget down to the last 40 cents. And after adding our pickups into our inventory, we now have 17 pairs of shoes that we can sell online. So hopefully by next episode, a few of those will sell and we can get back out there and start sourcing shoes. So hopefully the snowball can keep growing and growing on our way to the origin story, Jordan ones. But as you guys know, we are not stopping there. We're building an entire sneaker collection. So let me know down in the comments what you want to see end up in that collection. And if episode three of this series is already out, I'm going to put a thumbnail to it right here so you can go straight to it. But in the meantime, if it's not out, I'm sure the thumbnail up here is going to be something you will definitely enjoy. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next episode. I'm trying to build my very own sneaker collection with no money out of pocket. How? I'm doing that by going to stores like this one, the Goodwill Bins, where I can pretty much buy anything and pay by the pound. So you can get shoes for pretty cheap here. I'm gonna pop in and see if I can find anything underpriced that I can sell online, and then we can use those profits to fund our sneaker collection. And I got Carly with me. So as I mentioned, the Goodwill Bins is pay by the pound. And here in my area, it is $1.89 per pound. And the way it works is basically they roll out these blue bins full of clothes, shoes, hard goods, and various other things throughout the day. As they're rolling them out, they have you line up by the entrance. Some locations do it a little different, but it's generally the same concept. So you start out by lining up by the door and whenever the employees say go, you can rush the bins and look over them and try to see what you're going to reach for after they let you start digging. And then once they let you start digging, it's just a fight to get the best items that you can find before someone else snatches them from right in front of you. And when we showed up to the Goodwill bins today, we actually got there right on time. They were rolling out brand new shoe carts and I ended up walking in the doors and getting right in the back of the line. And once they said go, I went through the bins and let me show you what I ended up walking away with. After the first rotation, got a solid little bag full. I got really excited finding these Yeezy 350s, but after inspecting them right here, I just look at the tag in there. I mean, they're they're clearly fake. So that was kind of a letdown, but I did manage to find these Ariat boots. These were the ones that I went to right off the rip. They were sitting on the, bit, the edge of the bin. So definitely grab those. But before I go through the bag, I wanted to go through and see if there is anything that anyone threw back. A good time to pick up shoes is after the rotation's over, uh, just to see what other people are throwing back. I did find these Air Force One Independence Days, but they were way too worn on the bottom, so I had to leave those behind. I also found these Toon Squad Crocs, but unfortunately they were both left feet. So there really wasn't much in the throwbacks worth picking up. But here's another look at what I did end up walking away with. These vintage Adidas Dragons would have been a nice like 60 to $70 flip, but they were peeling on the inside. So there's just another look at the fake Yeezys that I found. Awesome. All right, so here's everything we grabbed. Uh, as you can see, we paid $18.12. Uh, this is definitely the best thing that we found. These Ariat boots in really good condition. Men's size 13, good size. This will definitely, we'll be in the profit after selling these. These specialized sneakers, the BOA lacing system usually makes these things a little bit more valuable. I do need to toss some insoles in them. Uh, they don't have cleats, but this is still a really good model with, the, with this lacing system. They should sell 40 plus shipping. So either one of those is gonna put us in the profit. Again, we only paid $18 for everything. Grab these just to like a basic pair of Nikes. I'm probably gonna run these through the washing machine. Uh, I don't know if you can tell, but a little discolored. They are men's size seven, but I'll probably sell these to a women's size eight and a half. Again, these ones need insoles, but I got plenty of these at home. And then the last find is these Under Armour Charged Five. I think that's a five bandit. So this should be like a new-ish model. Yeah, these are from 2020, so they're not super old. Um, 
is another one that's probably 40 plus shipping. Anything here is gonna put us in the profit. So I like sourcing at this place just because of the buy cost, but I don't like being here and fighting with everybody. You guys know how I feel about it, but that's all the shoes we got picked up. And I couldn't leave behind this little club penguin plush because you know, we're paying by the pound. This was pretty much free. So here's what we got. How'd you do today? Uh, I got 13 things for $12. Uh, three of them are mine. Two of them are kids clothing. I don't know what I'm gonna do with. <laughs> I have a problem with buying kids shoes and she has a problem with buying just kids anything. I limited myself. I only got two. Yeah. One was like new tag, so you know. We still have plenty of money to spend. Um, do you wanna go thrifting today? Sure, but I need some food or something. Yeah, I need some food or something too. I'll, I'll reassess, if I change clothes, we're, we're finishing this week's sourcing a different day, <laughs> but if I'm still in the same clothes, same day. Now, before we hop into the next stop, if you caught last week's episode, you know that we ended that episode with 40 cents in our sneaker collection fund. So you may be wondering where we're getting this money to spend. And well, we had nine sales roll in since last episode. So I'm gonna quickly go over how much those sold for and then how much money we're putting back into our fund after taking out our shipping costs and fees. So to kick us off, the iridescent converse that we bought at Plato's Closet in episode one ended up selling for $56.13. The Roger Federer on clouds that we also picked up from Plato's Closet, those sold for $68.00. The Nike Air Max Stefan Janoskis that we got at Goodwill ended up selling for $59.91. The Nike Air Zoom Pegasus Premium ended up selling on Poshmark for $39. The Air Max 97s that we picked up from Goodwill for $17 sold for $54.24. The other pair of on clouds that we also got at that same Plato's Closet trip sold for $64.77. And then the other pair of Stefan Janoski's, the camo ones, sold for an even $40 on Poshmark. The new with tags Teos sneakers that we found at Goodwill for $13, those sold for $72.09. And then our last sale of the week was the Mizuno Wave Creations. Those sold for $63.44. Now adding all of this together, that had a gross sales price of $582.35. But on that, we did have to pay $234.97 to get those shipped to the buyers as well as to pay the fees for the platforms that we're selling on. So taking that out, our total number that's gonna be added back into our sneaker fund was $300. $47.38. So adding in the 40 cents that we finished off last episode with, we're sitting at $347.78. But in last episode, we did pick up a pair of knee-high Converse for $25 at Goodwill, but unfortunately they didn't have laces and being knee-highs with 20 eyelets, they were kind of hard to find laces for. I know somebody commented on the last video telling me where to buy them, but I think the comment was removed or something, I couldn't find it, but I did end up finding a pair of laces on Amazon that I hope are going to fit. Those cost me $5.68, so taking the cost of those laces out of our fund, we are sitting at $342.10. Sense. And I know I'm dropping a ton of numbers on you, but we do also have to take out what we just spent at the Goodwill bins, and that was $18.12. So subtracting that from the fund, we are sitting with $323.98 to finish out the rest of the episode. So let's hop into this next Goodwill and see if we can find some more shoes to add to the sneaker fund. All right, we are at a Goodwill, and best part about it is, same clothes. It's the same, same day. day. Same day. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's see if we can spend the rest of our budget. First pair that caught my eye were these New Balance Fresh Foams. They were the color of the week, which is blue. So they were only $7.50. Fresh Foams always do well for me. And I spotted these Mizunos. These were like an Atlanta Braves collab and they were only $11. The last Mizunos that we picked up did really well. So felt pretty good about grabbing these. And then up on the top shelf, I spotted some Echoes. I always do well with these, but not for $20, even in the condition they're in. And I gotta say, this is the first time I've ever found skate high bolts at the thrift store, but these were $40. So obviously left them and then turned around and found these, these Nike Dunk Lows at Goodwill. And they only had them priced at $13, which is crazy. I'm definitely gonna have to authenticate them, but a crazy find nonetheless. And then I had to leave this in. I'm just going through the, the, the shoes and then... What is that? Can we put it on the porch? Do you think Archie would like it? 
So now that we got that over with, I spotted these hokas down on the bottom, but these were also $46, pretty, pretty pricey for a thrift store. So obviously left those behind. And then I also spotted these Brooks running shoes right next to them. They needed a clean, but if you caught the first episode, you know we're pretty good at cleaning up the white shoes. We got the Cortezes clean, and these were only 15 bucks. So definitely went in and grabbed those. I spotted these Gary V K Swiss. Go. The truth, go. Expected these to have a resell, but not really. They, they didn't, had to leave them behind. And then I also spotted these Youth LeBrons, but unfortunately they were $16 and they had some pretty rough wear on them, so left those. And then these Air Max 90s, they were a toddler size. I just never really have too much luck with Air Max 90s and toddler sizes. First up at that Goodwill, spent $52.14. I ended up putting the New Balances back at the register because I noticed like the inside heel was kind of broken. So only one with these four. Uh, what else did I grab? The other kids' shoes, the Air Max 90s. I've just never had luck with those, so I left those, but I did pick up the Air Force Ones. Uh, I always do well in Air Force Ones, no matter what size they are, kids or adults. So I picked these up for 10. Probably gonna be at least a double up on those. Since the last New Balances that we had sold so fast, I was a little bit more confident on taking the gamble on these. There was like six listed, and there were, I think, three sold. A couple sold at like 49 plus shipping, so these are pretty cool. The Atlanta Braves, they have the baseball stitching on the toe, so pick these up for 10 or 11 or something like that. Yeah, 11. And then if you got the first episode with the Nike Cortezes, I had to oxyclean those. I'm uh, gonna use the same method on these Brooks. The main thing with these, the colorway is amazing, and the, uh, the tread on the bottom, lots of life left. So these were 15, I think. Yeah, 15, great condition, a newer model, the Levitate 5s. Uh, Definitely happy to grab those for 15, but the definite find of the day, these Nike Dunk Lows from 2005. I need to run these through the uh, Check Check app. The tag looks like that, but I checked other tags on GOAT and they look exactly the same. Uh, the SKU was, was, was the same across everything that I saw online. Um, again, really good condition. I saw one comp of these on eBay for $300. I'm sure I probably can't get that out of them, but still an amazing find to find dunk lows at goodwill i wish these were my size i do like the colors on them uh, but unfortunately we're looking for 10 and a half and these are 11 and a half but uh so far this is probably the find of the series this is going to help us get a lot of money into the fund but i think that's going to wrap up our sourcing day that find was absolutely crazy. Probably definitely my favorite find of the series so far. I went ahead and submitted the photos into the Check Check app and we got a pass. So super stoked about that. If you want to authenticate a pair of shoes and you've never used the Check Check app, I'll leave a referral code down in the uh, description of the video so you can get a free check when you download the app. But as you know, we started this video with 40 cents in our sneaker fund and 17 pairs in inventory. And between the nine sales that we had and the two thrift stores that we hopped into today, we're ending the video with over $270 in our sneaker fund and 16 pairs still left in inventory to sell to up that sneaker fund. So hopefully we can make our way up to the origin story Jordan 1s. But if you've been following my Into the Sneakerverse series, you know that we're not stopping at those origin story 1s. We are building an entire sneaker collection from scratch and I'm hoping to spend absolutely no money to do it. And I'm still putting together the list of shoes that I want in my collection. So if you've got any recommendations, make sure to leave those down in the comments section below. And in the meantime, I'm gonna get some of these shoes listed and hopefully sell a few so we can get out and go sourcing again. And I will see you guys when that video comes out. So stick around until then. And if it already has, there should be a thumbnail to it right here. But if not, the thumbnail you're seeing should be a video I'm sure you'll enjoy. So go ahead and give that one a watch. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next episode. I'm attempting to build my very own sneaker collection starting from absolute scratch. And I wanna do it by spending no money out of pocket. I'm doing that by going to thrift stores and buy sell trade stores, hoping to find shoes that are underpriced that I can sell online for a profit and use that money to fund my sneaker collection. We're hoping to kick off the collection with a brand new pair of origin story Jordan 1s. And if you caught last week's episode, we finished out with 200 $171.84 in the fund to spend on new inventory this week. So with that being said, let's get into the sneaker verse. First pair that caught my eye in the men's section were these J. Cole Puma Dreamers. 
but unfortunately these were priced at 20 bucks and they really don't have much of a pre-owned resale value so i ended up leaving these behind then moving on down i found these nike hirachi moon landings i've sold these in the past for up to 100 dollars, and these are only 30 bucks so definitely put those in the cart to look up some recent comps these kobe mentalities have been sitting here for quite a while because they are peeling in the midsole so unfortunately uh, i definitely can't grab those and then up on the top shelf i found these retro 12s but these were 50 dollars, and as you can see they are pretty worn so definitely had to leave those behind as well and i thought i had a nice little score here with these ufos but as you can see the tread is about to wear through but for 11 bucks that would have been a good pickup if they were in just a little bit better condition it's a good brand to keep an eye out for and here's another one these olakai leather flip-flops i sell these quite a bit 11 bucks isn't bad they typically go between like 30 to 35 plus shipping so gonna think about that one and then i had to show you guys these these uh, Nikes down here when I checked them out they had an Adidas NMD boost midsole obviously these are fake but I, I had to show them to you guys Nike Air Max NMDs you ever seen these before then moving on down I found these Nike Air Max 97s they were unfortunately $20 which isn't a terrible price uh, so I went ahead and put these in the cart to look them up but ended up passing on them because they don't really sell well in the women's sizing and then I saw these Nike Epic Flyknit Reacts uh, these were a really good colorway but unfortunately they did want $26 so ended up passing on those as well and then i saw these brooks that were in decent condition and they weren't a bad price at 13 dollars but they were missing insoles and honestly i haven't really done great with the glycerin so i had to think on this one i ended up passing on them though because of the insoles then down here on the end i saw these pink nmds they were 16 dollars, which is a little steep and the sell-through rate especially on women's nmds isn't all that great so Unfortunately, another pair that I had to leave behind. Next in the kids section, I found these Zoom Freaks for $26. And unfortunately, yet again, it's kind of a theme at this store. Um, they don't really sell for high enough to justify a $26 price. So left those behind. And then over here on the like more premium shoe section, these are some... Uh, post yeezy adidas i'm not sure what the actual model is called but those were 50 so couldn't really pick those up and then up here were some giannis immortalities but unfortunately they were 60 bucks so not much resale value left in these either but still pretty cool to see at the thrift and then lastly what are these lebron 11s but they were also 60 bucks so left those behind as well and then after thinking about it the moon landings didn't sell for as much as they used to and i didn't really want to pick up anything else so we left the first store empty-handed so unfortunately stop one was a bust i'll be honest with you i went there yesterday and while they didn't have much yesterday uh they haven't put out really anything since then so didn't pick anything up the olakai's weren't there yesterday the flip-flops but they were women's size 10 so i figured i'd pass on those the kind of a lower dollar sell the moon landings i'm very surprised that those weren't worth more than they actually are i passed on them there were some pre-owned comps selling for around a hundred dollars but i feel like that's uh like near dead stock like with box but there was it was just too many sales in like the 20 to 40 dollar range to justify paying 30 if they're still on there on half off day i'd gladly pay 15 for them but end up leaving those behind today but that's all right i got another goodwill in mind today i'm sure that we're not gonna end the day empty handed so i'll see you guys there Making our way into the second Goodwill, the first pair that I picked up were these Ultra Provision 6s. This is the newest model of the Provision, so $16 was a really good price for those. Then I found these Merrells. They caught my eye because they were half off. Green was the color of the day, so they would have only been $6.50. I did end up passing just because the sell-through rate wasn't quite there. I also found these PG4s. I think they're fours in this like orange digital camo, but they were 20 bucks and a little too much wear, so left those behind as well. These Converse were pretty cool. Just want to show those to you, and then someone had dyed their Air Force one, so definitely didn't pick those up. Found these Vibram Five Fingers, typically a really good pickup at $10, but the sole was separating, so unfortunately had to leave those behind. And right next to them were these Clove Nursing Shoes. These typically do pretty well. They sell a little slower, so at $17, I decided to pass on them this time. And then I found these Nike Air Zoom Pegasus 39s, and the 39 is the newest model, so I think that we'll do really well with these at $14. Then moving on over here, I found these indoor soccer cleats. What caught my eye is the CR7 on the inside. Uh, that's the Cristiano Ronaldo model. I ended up looking these up, though, and they weren't quite worth grabbing. And down on the bottom shelf, I found these Nike Prestos for $16, and these were in pretty good condition, so I went ahead and picked those up and then up on the top i found some adidas Terex hiking boots but just another one that didn't have much of a sales history so 
didn't want to spend $16 of our sneaker fund on those. And then down here, I found some Doc Martens and it's like blue suede colorway and they were only $15. That's an absolute steal for Doc Martens. So that one's a definite no brainer pickup in my opinion. And then I found these Dan Post cowboy boots. I recently sold a pair of Dan Post boots for like $200, but uh, unfortunately this model just wasn't quite as good as the model that I found last time. I found some North Face boots in the kids section for $13 and these things were like brand new, but unfortunately being the dead of summer, I figured that these would probably sit for a while and I'd rather turn on money a little quicker. So passed on those, but I did find a couple of sneakers in the kids section. These Jordan ones, I passed on them because they were kind of dirty. Both of these shoes were $8 a piece, uh, but these also had their laces cut and I really didn't want to deal with that. And I found these Reebok Cardi B collab shoes for eight bucks, but unfortunately the, the toddler sizing just really doesn't sell too well. So again, passed on both of those. And then I'm probably going to regret this, but I found these purple Hunter boots for $15. Hunter boots typically sit for me, but I feel like with the purple color and being in the middle of summer, these might do pretty well. All right, so here's what we narrowed it down to. There was definitely some good stuff in there that just had a little bit slower of a sell-through rate, so I ended up leaving all that behind. But this is what we walked away with. I think the best find at this place is probably these Ultra Provision 6s for only 16 bucks. Uh, I believe that this is the newest model of the provisions and the tread on these are amazing. I think I could get like 70 bucks out of these without checking comps, just off the top of my head. But all in all, we paid $96.69. So a little, little expensive stop, but I think we got some good stuff. I think we're headed to a Plato's Closet next. I'll see you guys there. Now, before we hop into Plato's Closet, I need to let you guys know about the six sales that we've made since last episode. It should have been eight, but the black Nikes that we got at the Benz and the Animal Crossing Pumas both sold on eBay for $50 a piece, but I've been waiting all week for the buyers to pay. So I think that I'm gonna have to end up relisting those, but the ones that actually sold, let's let's start off with the shoes that we got from the Benz because three of those have actually already sold. If you caught that episode, we paid $18 for four pairs of shoes from the Goodwill Benz and the best sale to come through so far are definitely the Ariat boots. We sold those really quick for $60 plus shipping. The buyer was all in at $80.24. Next, the specialized cycling shoes that had the BOA lacing system. Those sold for $58.95. And then our last sale of the shoes that we got from the Goodwill Bins were the Under Armour Charged Fives. Those ended up selling for $40.98. And then if you caught the episode where we picked up some red Rothy's from Goodwill for $8, those ended up selling for $69.38. We also sold the White Brooks Levitate for $45 over on Poshmark. And then our last sale of the week, and I'll be honest with you guys, we lost about 50 cents on this one. It was the Nike shocks that we picked up from Goodwill. I paid $20 for them because the sell through rate was great and they usually sell around $60, but I ended up taking an offer and selling them for $39.23. The reason for that is I overlooked a flaw in the shoes. There was a tear in the upper fabric. So I just wanted to move them, get them out of the inventory. I didn't want to sit on some damaged shoes for too long. So I took the offer and after the shipping and fees, we got back $19.50. So we lost a little bit of money on those shoes specifically, but all in all, the shoes that we sold over the past week added up to $333.71 in gross sales. Now on that, we did have to pay $113.35 on fees and shipping to get the shoes to the buyer. So taking that out of our gross sales, we were ended up with $220.36 to add back into our sneaker fund, which as I mentioned earlier in the video was sitting at just over $270. So our new budget that we have to spend in the rest of today's episode is $492.20, the highest our shoe fund has been so far. But taking out what we just spent at that last Goodwill stop, we're sitting right around $400 to finish off today's episode. So with that being said, let's get back into the thrifting.
first pair that caught my eye at Play-Dohs were these Blazers. I really like the look of these. I really like the shoes for myself, but unfortunately these aren't my size and $40 isn't quite enough for resale. So had to leave those behind. I also found these flight posits in like excellent condition. I don't think these things had been worn more than a couple times, but they were $95 and I think I could only sell them for like 130 to 150. So not quite enough profit there. I did find these Justice League Converse and these were only 20 bucks, I believe. And these were just in excellent condition. Just a cool collaboration shoe that you guys know I can't leave behind. And then over in the women's section, I found these Jordan 11 lows. They were $55, but typically the grade school sizing for most Jordans just aren't quite worth it. So I had to leave these behind. I also found these, I'm not sure what the model is, but they were on clearance and clearance was 70% off. So those are only $750. Found some more Jordan retros. These were the 14s. They were $50. Just another cool pair of shoes here, but not enough money left for resell. So left those as well. Here's another crazy shoe that I just had to show you guys. These Air Force One, I think they're called the Rebel XXs or something like that, but I've just never seen these Air Force One before. They were pretty wild. Here's another pair of 12s that uh, I didn't pick up for $70. Just another cool pair to find at the thrift store. Found a pair of LeBron 18 lows for 50. I'm pretty sure this colorway is called the LeBron Palmer. <laughs> it's kind of a tongue twister, but LeBron Palmer ended up leaving these behind as well. Found some Air Max ones. These were actually for a really good price. They're only $35. So like for personal, that'd be a great price, but not much resale history. So left those as well. And also found these Real Tree 97s. They were $75, still a pretty good price, but again, not much left on the bone for resale. All right, so here's what we're walking away with at Plato's Closet. I got five pairs and paid i think it's just about the same as the last stop 91 38 i actually did pretty good on clearance all of these are were on clearance except for one the one that wasn't for these dc justice league uh converse these were 20 or 25 dollars one or two 20 dollars um so those are pretty cool uh, i should double my money on those and then everything else was clearance these janoskis were only 750 after 70 percent off these were also only 750 uh, both models that I've already sold in the past. Nothing crazy. I should like $30 plus shipping for both of those. I did get these Fear of Gods, which are pretty cool, but I mean, the moccasins don't really sell for that much money. They had them tagged at 80 and clearance brought them down to, what's that? Eight times three is uh, 24. So these were $24, um, but they're in really good condition. I, I would be surprised if I couldn't double my money on those. And then the last pair I got, uh, these were $21, these Flyknit 270s. That's that. All that for 91. All right, so through two stops, we're not even through half of our budget yet. I don't really have time to drive to another like area that has thrift stores, but there are some uh, retail stores in this area like Ross and Burlington. I don't really know if you consider those retail. I mean, I'm assuming it's still retail, but I don't know. Technically thrift stores are retail. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm thinking about popping into Ross and seeing what I can, what I can pick up there. I just need to be home because uh, my mail lady's probably gonna be here sometime soon to grab my orders and I probably need to be there for that. Um, so gonna try to be quick. I'm gonna pop into Ross. I've, I've seen some, some good stuff come out of Ross lately. So hopefully we can, we can find something nice. And if I have time, I might pop into Burlington, uh, but we'll see, I'll see you guys at Ross. Now, if you guys remember in the last episode, Goodwill had a pair of these Van Skate High bolts for $40. And I just wanted to show you that Ross can sometimes be cheaper than Goodwill, which, you know, is kind of kind of surprising. Seems a little backwards, but I also found these Adidas top tens in the green patent leather for $45. That seems like a really good deal, but they were kind of flooded. So I ended up passing on those. And I saw so many of these Hoka's here at Ross, and it really hurts to see them sitting at $80 because there, there could be so much money on these hokas but they're just a little too expensive but i had found a couple pairs on clearance these ultras were uh, 25 and those converse were only 13 but unfortunately the line guys i don't know what it is about ross i i mean i found two pairs of shoes and they would have been pretty decent money like the ultras were only 25 probably could have sold those for like 80 to 90 plus shipping kind of a lower sell through rate probably because you know it's it's not flooded but there's several of them at ross and I'm sure that mine's not the only one clearancing them down. And then I found those uh, Converse for $14, which was a great price, but you know, it's, it's like a $40 sale plus shipping. But the thing that just sent me over the edge was I'm not, I'm not waiting in line. The line was wrapped all the way toward the back of the store. Um, so it's a bus there. I'm thinking I'm gonna pop into Burlington. If I walk into Burlington and it's really busy and the line's really long, I'm not even gonna look at shoes, but I'm gonna pop in and see if I can find anything. So fingers crossed, it's not as ridiculously busy. And the thing is they always have one or two registers open and then 
four or five closed. So I, I, Ross is busy all the time. You'd think they'd have employees working, but whatever, nothing at Ross. On to the next stop. So luckily this Burlington, which was right next door to the Ross, was completely empty, so had a chance to go through the shoes, and the first thing that I saw were these Cole Hans. They were only $22, which is an amazing price for these. I should get like 60 plus for these, hopefully. I also found these Merrells on clearance. The bare, barefoot models and Merrells always do really well for me, and these were only $29.99, so I'm hoping to get like 70-ish dollars plus shipping for these. Now, a couple pairs that I thought about picking up, these Fila Grant Hills were pretty wild, and I've sold Grant Hills for a good amount of money in the past from Burlington, but I, I don't know, the sell-through rate on these models just weren't too great. They also had them in this NYX colorway, and they were all under $35, but ended up passing. They also had some disruptors there in the women's section for $25, which seemed like a good price, but... I didn't really want to sit on them and they also had so many feelers here like i kind of got I, I kind of like them i'm not gonna lie i like the retro look of these i don't think i could ever rock them especially in the pink colorway but i think feel is coming back well guys that's uh that's a wrap i only grabbed the two pairs i got the cole hans for 22 and the merrill barefoots for 30. both both shoes models brands that i do very well with pre-owned so uh interested to see how they do uh being brand new the the merrills i looked up comps on those and i should get like 70 to 80 bucks for them plus shipping on the low end uh, like brand new in the box they sell pretty well uh, like 100 to 130 dollars i'm not sure what the retail price is on them uh but barefoot shoes are just really popular and then the cole hans um I don't know the retail price on these, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's pretty high. Uh, this specific model is the Nantucket 2.0. I've sold plenty of it pre-owned, um, so had a had a good feeling about those. All in all, I spent $55.88, and uh, as I'm sure you know, that's going to wrap up the day. Burlington was a lot smoother than Ross. Uh, the line was just non-existent. I walked right up to the register when I was ready to go, but uh, it was just like all in all, not, the, not a great sourcing day. We, we found some stuff, which is great. Always good to find things, not complaining there, but um, not things that have been up to the caliber of the first few episodes. But anyway, let's. Uh, I'll, I'll stop mumbling here. We'll wrap this up, and I'll see you guys back at the apartment, and we'll go over how the series is sitting. Today wasn't the best sourcing trip I've ever had, but it also definitely wasn't the worst. We had $492 to spend today, and we spent right around half of that. We spent $243.95 on 13 pairs of shoes to add into our inventory. So we've definitely made some progress over the last episode. Last episode, we finished with 16 pairs in inventory and $271 to spend, and now we're sitting at 23 pairs of shoes in inventory and $248 to spend next week on our journey to pay for the origin story Jordan 1s. But if you've been following along with the series, you know that we're not stopping there. I want to put together an entire sneaker collection. I want some input from you guys. So if you have any recommendations on sneakers that you want to see in the collection, let me know down in the comment section below. And if episode five of Into the Sneakerverse is already out, I'm going to put a thumbnail to it right here. But if it's not posted yet, I'm sure this is a video that you are going to enjoy. And with that being said, I will see you guys in the next episode. I currently have $248.25 in my shoe fund and the plan is to take that money to local thrift stores and buy sell trade stores hoping to find underpriced shoes that I can then sell online and use that profit to fund my very own sneaker collection. In addition to the $248 that we currently have in the shoe fund, over the course of the past four episodes, we've amassed over 20 pairs of shoes currently sitting in inventory. So hopefully while we're out looking for more profitable shoes, some of the shoes that we already have in inventory will sell, getting us one step closer to the first pair that we're hoping to get in the sneaker collection, and that is the Origin Story Jordan 1s. This is kind of an ambitious goal with the current market value sitting right around $800. So hopefully by the end of this video, we'll be just one step closer to that goal. This is into the sneakerverse. Harley and I are in Melbourne, Florida to restock her antique booth and hopefully go to the beach. But we figured we'd pop into a few thrift stores to see if we can find some more uh, profitable shoes to add to our sneaker fund. So let's get to it. Alrighty, hopping into the first store of the day. The first pair that I picked up were these Vans, but I didn't really want to clean these up. And especially at $15, just not really enough profit to be made. These zoom flies I've done well with in the past, but they were also $15 and they didn't have insoles. If they had insoles, I might've thought about it at 15. 
Thought we had a $10 pair of Nike Prestos here. Unfortunately though, these didn't have any Nike insignia on them, so clearly, clearly fake. And then we got these uh, Retro 8s. I think these are called 3 Peats. I think that's what the colorway is called. But unfortunately, Goodwill wanted $75 for these, which I think is probably a little over market considering the condition. Also found these Kobe AD mids for, I believe they were $40 but the condition just didn't really justify the price on these either. And I'm also, I need to take a second to apologize to you guys because like I mentioned, we we're planning on going to the beach today and so I'm wearing my flip flops. So <laughs> I apologize for the dogs being out in this video, but passed on some uh, Air Force One platforms for uh, 25. And then I picked up these Brooks. This is probably the first pickup of the first stop at $13.99. Uh, cool colorway and I always do well on Brooks. So definitely gonna grab those. Next pair I came across definitely got me excited. These Saucony Bullets were only $10, and these always sell really quick for me between $39 and $49. Bucks. That's an easy pickup. And then I saw these Peanuts Vans. Peanuts is one of the collabs with Vans that always does really well. So we're, for $15, I'm definitely, definitely going to grab these. Then up on the top shelf, I spotted some Doc Martens. Unfortunately, they weren't like a great model or anything, and they were $30. So had to leave those behind as well. And down here on the bottom, I found some Kurus. I figured these would be priced decently because not a very popular brand, but Goodwill, I guess, knew what they had, and those were 30 bucks. And then above them, we had some Legos Adidas, uh, but these were youth size, and I didn't really want to grab a youth pair of shoes. I'd probably sit on them for a while. And then on our way to the register, I spotted these triple white Air Max Pluses for 30 bucks. Not quite worth paying up for, and the cleaning process just wouldn't be fun. All right, so we only walked away with three pairs here. These Vans Peanuts. Uh, the Peanuts collabs I've always done really well with, so this was this was a pretty good find. Uh, the Saucony Jazz always sells so quick for me. These I typically list at like $49, and I surprisingly get a lot of full price sales on this, so $10 was a steal. And then just another clean pair of Brooks. They were a women's size 10 and a half, so not an amazing size, but they're super clean and nice colorway. On these three, I spent $41.70, but on a separate transaction, I couldn't walk away with this thing. We found a Nintendo Labo for $15, and it is, um, it's not sealed brand new but it is it's unused they still got everything in here the game's still in here um i just i really don't know if it is going to be in english because everything on the box is in japanese so uh this is going to be fun to test out um i've always wanted to play this but i don't want to pay retail for it so that was really cool to see here but we got another good world to go to so i'll see you guys there the beach isn't looking too good we just got a severe thunderstorm warning mm. But it's Florida. Maybe it will pass in two minutes, twenty minutes. Yeah, it's probably gonna pass. We're gonna we're gonna try. We made it. Stop number two. It's raining. It is raining. Stop number two definitely got off to a good start with these Tiger Woods golf shoes. Anything Tiger Woods always sells for good money. Tiger Woods, Tiger Tiger Woods, Tiger 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 Woods. And these were in pretty good condition uh, and they were only 12 bucks so this was an easy pickup to kick off the second stop i also found these flynet air max like 2016 2017s for 14. unfortunately i just i wasn't thrilled with the condition on these so i left those behind and i found another pair of doc martens these were priced a little better but i would also say they're a little bit worse of a model so even at 12 bucks i decided to leave these behind then i found these ufos in this like purple camo colorway they're only 11 bucks and they were a little dirty but i think just throwing these in the wash machine will clean them up good ufos always go quick between like 30 to 50 dollars on a good day so definitely gonna grab those found this pair of high top sneakers the brand on these is incas i've only found this a couple times and both times that i found them They've sold pretty quick, and I think one pair of low tops I sold for 49 bucks, so I felt like at $12 this would be a pretty pretty good gamble. And then over in the women's section, I found another pair of Tiger Woods Expect anything different? golf shoes, and this model is even better. They were a little bit more pricey. They were 16 bucks, but I'm telling you guys, these are probably going to sell for good money. This is probably the best find at the stop so far. Then moving on down the shelf, I found these Nike Court slip-ons, I think is the name of these. They were only eight bucks. So this is just like a, it's just a classic pair of Nikes that I wasn't going to leave behind for eight bucks. I found these New Balance 574s. They were a pretty nice colorway, but they were $15. This model does well, but I, I just didn't really feel like spending $15 of our fund on those. And then for those boots that have been sitting in the cart. They were a pair of Stetsons for 50 and a pair of, I think, Laredo's for 40 
for 30. Neither one of these were really worth grabbing, so left both of those behind. And then as I was letting Carly go through the jeans and everything, I went to the video game section and I found a gem from my childhood. I never played the racing game, but Jet Set Radio Future can't leave that behind. And then as I was headed to the checkout, I found these Zoom Gravities just chilling in the pants, but I wasn't going to pay $40 for them. So that wraps up our stop. All right, here's a look at everything we ended up with at that stop. We got the five pairs for $63 and eight cents only thing we really paid up for were these tiger woods but every single time i sell tiger woods they sell so fast and they sell for really good money these need a clean up and these need a clean up but i think that oxy clean in the washing machine will make these look really nice and then this brand right here it's kind of like a one of those sleeper brands that i don't think a lot of people know about they don't sell super fast but i always sell these in like the 40 dollar range so for how much were these 12 dollars. that was a really good find so um i think we're going to your booth next right yes. yeah we got to go to our booth to restock and then we might hit a plato's closet if we have time now before we hop into plato's closet i figured this would be a good time to go over the sales that have come in since last episode and let me tell you it's been a good week we've had nine sales roll in so far and to kick it off the first pair that we sold was the nike air max 270s that we picked up from plato's closet those sold for 62 dollars and 99 cents on eBay. Then we also sold another pair of Mizunos, the Atlanta Braves Mizunos, actually sold for full price on Mercari at $49 plus shipping. And then the Nike Vision Reacts that we got from the Goodwill Bins. We paid probably less than $3 for these and they sold for $74.69. And then we had a couple pairs of Brooks actually sell, one of them being the pair that we just picked up. Those Brooks Ghosts actually sold for $40 dollars on Poshmark and then we also sold a pair of Brooks GTS 21s that we picked up from Plato's for 10 bucks. Those sold for $50 on Poshmark. We also sold the Justice League Converse for $61.14. We sold the Blue Suede Doc Martens for $55 on Poshmark. And then a couple more sales that we actually picked up earlier in today's video. We sold the Ufos that we picked up from the thrift store for $47 on Mercari. And we sold the first pair of white Tiger Woods 15 golf shoes those sold for $85 and 19 cents. So we finished up that last stop with $143 and 47 cents in our shoe fund. But since then we've done $525 and one penny in sales, but we did have to pay shipping and fees on that number. So we got to subtract $129 and 33 cents. And that's going to leave us with $395 and 68 cents to add into our shoe fund, leaving us with a total total of $539.15 to finish out sourcing this week. So with that being said, let's hop on into Plato's Closet. Now, as I mentioned, before we hop into Plato's Closet, we do need to head to Carly's Antique Booth to get it restocked. If you are uh, local to Florida in the Melbourne area, it's on Sarno Road. It's called Antiques and Uniques. Here's a, a good look at her booth. It's Azalea Vintage Co. Uh, you can see it before it's restocked. And here is a nice look after things have been, you know, moved around, added to. Uh, so let me know down in the comments if you would get a chance to make it to Melbourne, Florida. Y you see that over there? It's not me. Well, we made, yeah, not Carly, the sign on the, on the, we made it to Plato's Closet. Hopefully we find some good stuff. Is this a gang sign? Maybe don't do that, I don't know. It looks like they have shoe clearance bins right there. Or there's an event, an event coming up. This Plato's Closet did have a clearance event going on, but it was just the bins up by the window and it was only 25% off everything in the bins, so not a huge discount. Uh, I was looking through and I found these Air Max 1s in this like uh, Miami beach colorway, I think, but not quite worth it that price. Found another pair of Peanuts Vans with a bleach stain on them, a couple pair of Olakai's for only $10, so $7.50 after the discount, but they were just, they were just in rough condition and they weren't good sizes, so. Ended up leaving those in this bin. I found a pair of Nike Cortez for, I think like 13 bucks after the discount, some LeBrons, but both of those in rough condition as well. And then moving down here, a couple other pairs of shoes that just weren't worth grabbing. These 90, 95s for uh, $75 minus the discount. And then these Cardi B Reeboks just don't really do, do well um, in the resale market. So left all those. I thought about, um, not these New Balance, these New Balances were clean, but still a little pricey. But I did think about grabbing these Clove nursing shoes. They were only like eight bucks after the discount, but again, they were just super dirty. So ended up leaving these behind as well. 
Then moving over to the racks, I did find these Jordan 11 low IEs. They were $75, so that's about like what they go for on eBay. So even if I had a 20% off coupon, not quite worth grabbing. Then I also found a pair of Nike Dunk Highs. These were also priced at 70 bucks, so not worth reselling, but I, I just really like the colorway on these. These are really cool. Then I did find the men's clearance bins towards the back of the store and I dug through all of this and since it was only 25% off, none of this was really worth grabbing. There wasn't anything too crazy in these bins. Then over in the women's, I found these zoom flies in a really cool colorway and they were super clean and only $35, but unfortunately they just aren't worth reselling, but still a nice pair of shoes to find at Play-Dohs. And then I found a Disney collab. I found these Disney vans for only $22 and they were a sample shoe on the inside by the size that said sample not for resale. So I'm not sure if that's going to add value, but definitely went ahead and picked these up. Then right above them, I saw these Vince sneakers. These are kind of hit and miss. I mean, they were only 10 bucks, so I figured I'd go ahead and take the gamble on them. These usually sell in the $30 range on Poshmark. And I found these Kuru Carreras. This is another really good um, higher end orthopedic shoe, I think. So definitely picked those up. And then I found another pair of Ufos and these were new with tags for $8. That was probably my favorite find at this Play-Dohs. And then on down the shelf, I found these Nike boots. I have no idea what these things are. These are crazy. I think Play-Dohs only had them priced at like $45, which seemed like a decent price, but looking them up, they just weren't worth reselling. But have you guys ever seen these? I These were these are new model to me for sure. And then I saw these Saucony running shoes. I almost walked right past them. They're only $12 and they are a higher end model of Saucony. So definitely a really good pickup there. And then I found another pair of these Ufos. For some reason, the used ones were priced more than the new ones, but $12 is still a good price. All right, so quick look at what we picked up. Uh, I got spent $81.32, and we got two pairs of the same model Ufos that we found earlier. Uh, these ones were new with tags for eight, and for some reason, the pre-owned were 12, but both those are a good price. I had 20% off to use, but everything was such good prices, I figured I'd save the 20% off for another time that I wanted to spend more money. Um, Saucony's were only $12. That's like a newer, like really high-end model. So that was a good pickup. Found some Kurus for only 12. The Vents typically do pretty well for me. It's kind of hit or miss, but for 10 bucks, I wasn't gonna leave behind. And then these sample Disney collab shoes. I don't know if sample is gonna add value or not, but these were only 22 bucks. So I figured that was a good price. I think that's gonna wrap up our day. So after that Play-Doh's closet stop, we're sitting at $457.03 in our shoe fund. And I haven't mentioned it yet, but we might have actually already added a pair of shoes to the sneaker collection. No, it's not the origin story Jordan 1, so we're kind of going out of order, but we definitely added a pair to the collection. But before I talk about that, we've already sold a pair of shoes that we picked up from that Play-Doh's closet stop, and it's actually the best sale that we've had all week. The Saucony Endorphin Pro 3s that we picked up for only $12 already sold. They went for $111.99 on eBay, but on that we did have to pay $29.49 in fees and shipping to get it to the buyer. So that leaves us with $82.50 to add back into our shoe fund. And if you think about it, that whole Play-Doh's Closet Stop cost us $81.32 and the one shoe, the Saucony's, sold for 82 after shipping and fees. So basically all the other shoes that we got from that stop were free. Uh, this is just why I love reselling. It's it, You can't go wrong. So adding the $82 back into the fund, we're rounding off today's episode with $540.33 in our sneaker fund. We're getting really, really close to our goal of the origin story Jordan 1s. Now back to the shoes that I mentioned we're putting into our sneaker collection. These came at a very unconventional way and we definitely stayed true to the no money out of pockets. My friends Between the Peaks over on Instagram actually ran a giveaway for a pair of shoes that are gonna look very familiar to you guys. We actually picked up a pair in the first episode or the second episode of the series and it was a brand new in the box pair of Vans, Marvel, Incredible Hulk collaboration. If you guys remember these from the uh, the first or second episode, we picked these up at Play-Doh's Closet for $14, but they were beat. But we ended up selling those, but these are brand new in the box. And the crazy thing is we didn't even win the giveaway. My good friend Chris, Retail Recon, he's been on the channel uh, many times in the past, so you might recognize him. He actually won the giveaway, and he knows that I'm a huge Marvel fan and that I'm putting a sneaker collection together, so he just he just sent them my way. So we got, we got our first pair of shoes 
in the sneaker collection. So we are, we're off the ground. But in terms of the origin story Jordan 1s, we have a little bit of a, a predicament. It's not, it's not a terrible predicament because we're in a really good position here. We've got $540 in the shoe fund and probably another 500 to a thousand. I don't know off the top of my head, but in that ballpark, I'd say, I'd say on a good day, if we sold out all the rest of our inventory, it would be a thousand dollars after shipping and fees. We could either A, just wait for some sales to trickle in and get the origin story Jordan ones and then still have a little bit money left over to continue the collection fund or B, we could just keep thrifting and slowly building up the uh, the fun budget. So let me know down in the comments below if you think that I should hold out, wait for some sales to roll in and go ahead and get my grail sneaker checked off the list or if we should play the slow game and get our sneaker fund and our shoe inventory built up as fast as possible with more thrifting next week. So again, answer that down in the comments below. And as you guys know, if you've been following the series, once we get those Jordan 1s, we're not stopping there. We're building out a whole sneaker collection. So another thing to let me know down in the comments, if you have any shoes in mind that you wanna see in the collection, make sure to leave that comment down below. And if the next episode of Into the Sneakerverse is already out, hit this thumbnail, it'll take you directly to it. But if that video is not yet released, I'm sure you're gonna enjoy whatever video is on this thumbnail right here. But with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next episode. I'm attempting to build the sneaker collection of my dreams, but the catch is I can't spend any money out of pocket. I'm doing this by buying and selling shoes from local thrift stores in my area and using that profit to fund the collection. We finished up last episode with $540 in the fund, which is getting really close to the first pair that I wanna check off the list, the origin story Jordan 1s. At the end of last episode, I asked you guys if I should hold out for more sales from our thrifted inventory to come through and go ahead and check my grail sneaker off my list or if we should keep thrifting and growing both our budget and our inventory and you guys said to keep thrifting so that's exactly what we're doing today but I don't want to spend too much of the fund I want to get to those origin story Jordan ones as fast as possible so we're going to a place that we've gone before where we can get shoes for cheaper than pretty much anywhere else in town and we had pretty good luck the last time we went so today if you haven't guessed already we're going to the Goodwill bin. Now, I, I'm not allowed to record in there, so we're working on limited footage today, but let me show you what we found. We have made it to the Goodwill Benz. The door's way down there. We had to park way back there. Carly's here. You excited? I'm so excited. <laughs> So we got here right on time again. They were doing the drop literally right as we were walking in the door. I didn't have time to film anything as I was like fighting with people over the, the crumbs that I got, but someone did throw back these two foot joys. Obviously the first pair was pretty cracked up. The second pair had a little yellowing, but overall good condition. During the actual drop, I literally only got these three pairs. These Jordan 3s, they were youth size, uh, but still in overall good condition. These leather vans, which were kind of meh, and then a toddler pair of Hirachis. That's, that's literally all I got during the uh, first rotation. And then I was going through all the throwbacks. Someone threw back these, I think they're called Space Jam uh, Air Force Ones, but like, how do these get worn out so much? Who wears their shoes that much? I guess they got their, uh, their money's worth. But I also saw these Brooks that we've actually sold before, but I, there's just no way I can sell these with that big tear in the inner heel. And then I also found a pair of Jordan 12 Lowe's, but as you can tell, the plastic had completely dried out and cracked, so obviously left those. So we got here right on time again, um, literally like 10 minutes before the shoe drop. And it just, it just wasn't a great day. I got some stuff, but even, even Carly, like, there's your bag down there. I'm trying to do a thumbs down. Thumbs down, too. Um, didn't find anything crazy, but um, I'll, I'll show you what I've whittled it down to real quick. All right, so I think the best thing that I found was probably these Ultra Boosts. I think that this this stain right here will come out in the wash. So really cheap. They don't really weigh too much. So that was that was a decent find. These Brooks um, are in pretty rough condition, but they're so cheap. Uh, there's a little bit of tread missing. I might. I don't know. I'll, I'm I'm still deciding on if I want to pick some of this stuff up because the condition is not the best. Um, but I mean, they are a nice pair of Brooks. At the end of the day, I could probably still sell for like 20 bucks plus shipping. I did find these Birkenstocks that aren't in terrible condition. They are the Birkenstock uh, Eva, like the rubber line that, you know, doesn't retail for more than like 40 or $50. So that's only like a $20 bill, but they don't weigh anything. Um, these Vans down here, I'm still deciding on. They need a good wash, but again, they're really, again, they're cheap because they're here at the bins. I might, you know, pick them up and list them at 20, try to get a quick sale. 
Um, Carly found these Air Max 90s. These I might pick up and just like, you know, try to use the rejuvenator to clean it up, see how clean it comes. Um, it's a decent size. It's a six Y, so women's seven and a half. Not terrible. And then uh, these foot joys that I showed you, I need to give them a good bend test because somebody threw them back. I don't know why they threw them back, so I need to figure out if there's any issues with them. And then I found these uh, Jordan 3s. I'm not sh certain of authenticity. I think they're real. They look good. They are youth, so I don't know. This is probably, it's got some pretty rough heel drag, but... That's it. Again, nothing crazy. Carly's still looking at kid stuff. Oh, we could put that on Archie. That would look good. Alrighty, here's what we uh, here's what we left with. Only spent the only good thing of this trip. <laughs> we only spent thirteen dollars, and Carly only spent like five bucks on all this. So that's nice. At the end of the day, we'll make our money back on these shoes. Probably, probably be in profit after these, and then everything else is just a uh, little cherry on top. This is probably a dumb buy, but I'm gonna clean them up, and you know. I'm not gonna lose money on them. They were in solid condition. Like, they're not falling apart or anything, so they just need a good little cleanup. Everything else, I'm probably just gonna throw in the washing machine. Uh, these need a little shout spray, but 13 bucks, not bad. Uh, next, we're gonna head to the uh, to a regular Goodwill store. Hopefully, we can actually find some uh, exciting things. I'm trying to talk about how we just made it to the outlet, or the uh, the retail store, and Carly's talking about, what was that? <laughs> That's what I'm a sub sandwich pizza honestly the greatest thing ever but um that's you know kind of irrelevant at the moment we made it we made it to the store hopefully this is a little bit better than the bins making our way into the store the first pair that i saw were these uh lebron 14 breads but unfortunately the bottoms were pretty beat and they were 25 dollars so left those behind i spotted these allen edmonds which is a really good dress shoe brand they were an okay size eight and a half and they were only 11 bucks which is good to see but the bottoms were completely worn out on these and it wasn't really the best model so i decided to leave those I spotted these nike joy rides but unfortunately they were 25 dollars so definitely too much for joy rides and then i spotted up on the top shelf these hey dudes and they were only 13 dollars and they were new with tags this isn't a huge sell this might be like a 35 dollar plus shipping sale so put in the card to think about it then i spotted these cole hans up on the top but again these were 25 dollars so left those behind then in the next aisle over, I spotted these uh, like green New Balances up on top, and they were actually a run Disney collab, which can sell for a lot of money. These were the Ariel model, but as you can see, they were pretty worn out. There was there was a lot of tread wear on the bottom. They were $15, and they were just coming apart, so I, I ended up leaving those behind, sadly. Then up on the top shelf, I spotted these Under Armors in pretty decent condition. These are like the Speedform somethings. I don't know. They're just a really clean pair of Under Armors, so again, put it in the cart to think about it. And over on the other side of the aisle, I spotted these Nike Zoom Flies, which can, can sell for decent money, but these didn't have insoles, and they were $20, so left those behind as well. And the last pair that caught my attention were these Ultras in a nice colorway, but unfortunately, these were $30, so <laughs> left those behind as well. I think we're about to walk out of here empty-handed. I don't even think Carly has anything. Do you have anything? No. They actually had registers not working, so I mean, it kind of worked out for us. We didn't walk away with, uh, with nothing, zero. We didn't walk away with nonsense. Zero pairs. I mean, I probably would have uh, wasted money on those hey dudes if the registers were open, but nah. All right, we're about to hop into a Play-Doh's closet because I might have got a lead on a pair of shoes that I might want to add to the collection, but more on that in just a minute. We need to go over the sales that have rolled in since last episode. And there's been quite a few, so buckle up. I will mention it's actually been a couple days since that sourcing trip. I didn't want to end the video after just those two stops. Um, so everything that we've already picked up has already been listed and we've started to sell through some of it. So with that being said, let's just hop right into what's sold over the past few days. First off, the Nike Fear of God moccasins that we got from Plato's Closet ended up selling on eBay for $59.37. Our other pair of Tiger Woods golf shoes sold on eBay for $65.26. The Saucony Bullets that we picked up in last episode, those sold on eBay for $48.75. The Kurus that we got from Plato's Closet sold for $54.42. And then the Jordan 3s that we literally just picked up from the Goodwill bins, those sold so fast. I put them in the washing machine to clean up the laces and the uppers and they came, they came really clean. They sold super quick, went for $46.07. And then if you remember 
early on in the series, first or second episode, we picked up some knee high Converse that didn't have laces. And I told you guys that I paid like six or $7 for some laces on Amazon. Well, those finally came in. I don't know what country I ordered them from, but it took almost a month for them to get here. And after they got here, I laced up those Converses. I listed them on eBay. This was actually our highest sale of the week. Those went for $137.76. And then another pair that we just picked up from the bins, those Ultra Boosts. Those cleaned up really good as well. Those sold for $42.59. And then since we're on the topic of the bins, we got a couple more sales, shocker. The Foot Joys, those went for $33.64. And the Birkenstock Eva, 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 whatever they're called. Those went for $23 plus shipping on Mercari actually, leaving us just the Air Max 90s. And I actually uh, cleaned those up with the rejuvenator, ran them through the washing machine. They actually look like they're in really good condition. So I, I got them listed. They're listed for $29 plus shipping. So uh, hopefully we'll move those quick. But that's the only pair from the bins that hasn't sold yet. And I thought it was a pretty bad stop, but everything that we picked up sold pretty quick. Nothing for a lot of money, but it went quick and we didn't pay a lot of money for it. So it was actually a lot better of a stop than I felt like it was at the time. And if you remember when we picked three pairs of those UFOs up in that same episode, the ones that were new with tags, those sold for $71.54. And then another early pickup, the SpongeBob Vans skate highs from like the first or second episode. Uh, those honestly took a while to sell. I think they actually hit the Vans outlets, so they weren't quite as valuable as they used to be. So those took a while to sell. They only went for $37 on Poshmark. So still made about $10 profit on those. And then if you remember when we popped into a Burlington, I picked up a brand new pair of Merrill Vapor Glove 3s or 4s or something like that. Those actually ended up selling for $67 plus shipping on Poshmark. We also sold the 101 Dalmatian Vans from Plato's Closet. Those actually sold for $50 plus shipping on Poshmark. And then the last sale of the week, we sold the purple knee-high hunter boots on Poshmark as well. Those went for, again, $50 plus shipping. So adding all of our gross sales together, we ended up doing $786.40 in sales since last episode. But on that, in order to ship them to the buyers and pay marketplace fees, we did have to pay $248.20 in fees and shipping leaving us with $538.20 to add into our sneaker fund that was sitting at 527 ish dollars. So now we have essentially doubled our sneaker fund, putting us at, for the first time ever, over $1,000 at $1,065.44 for us to take into Plato's Closet to round off today's episode. And I've, I've got to address the elephant in the room here. As you guys know, the number one pair that I want to check off off of the uh, sneaker collection list. The first pair we're going for, the origin story Jordan 1s, the market value on those is right around $800 and we have over a thousand to spend. So things are looking pretty good. But with that being said, let's hop into Plato's Closet. All right, so the bins and the uh, the thrift store they went into were pretty lackluster. I was trying, trying to get out of it. <laughs> I, was, I was really not wanting to do just those two stores in today's video and I've been looking for a time to make it out. And luckily today, um, I popped on Instagram and Plato's Closet always posts like shoes from time to time and they're not always worth grabbing, but if they are, you can call and hold. So uh, there was Plato's Closet that had a pair of New Balances. Uh, I'm not gonna say which model, I'll wait to, wait to show you. Uh, they are in my size and they're under market. They're only $55. I might have a 20% off coupon that I can use on top of that, but we'll see. Uh, we made it to Plato's Closet. It's, we're at an intersection, it's like right over here. Um, so we're gonna pop in there. Hopefully find some more shoes so this this isn't the worst sourcing trip in the history of YouTube videos. Um, everything from the bins is listed, but anyway, without me rambling on anymore, let's hop into this Plato's closet, grab some new balances, and see if they got some other profitable stuff. You ready? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I've never been to this Plato's closet before, so uh, interested to see the selection and the pricing. Look at that mood lighting. In there. I mean the um, what'd you say? You said, look at that mood oh, they do lighting. have mood lighting. The pricing on the New Balance is a good sign, so let's see, let's see if everything's like that. 
So as I mentioned, this is my first time inside this Play-Doh's closet, so I was really curious to see what kind of selection they had, and they had a huge selection, a lot of really good stuff, and honestly, it was decent prices. Nothing was really resellable, but for like personal, like for example, these Jordan 1s were only $50, like for a personal purchase, that's a really good price, but unfortunately, most of the stuff here didn't really have a lot of meat on the bones um, for me to make a profit off of. Like for example, I'm going down this line, and there's a few pairs of uh, Disney collaboration vans, which is usually something that Play-Doh's prices between like 14 and $20, but these were 40, which is a decent price for them. Don't get me wrong. Um, so I can't really blame them for that. And then these Disney vans were $40, but that's kind of the theme for the whole store. Nothing really worth reselling. The one thing that did catch my eye that I thought we might have some potential on were these Doc Martens because they were new with tags. And I believe they had them priced at only $75. Potentially could have been a $200 pair of shoes, but looking them up in this colorway, I just didn't really see the comps to justify spending 75. The only pair that we could have probably it on were these Kate Spade Keds for 14. I've sold these for 50 before, but ultimately because of the sell through rate, I left them. All right, we made it out. How do you think it was? It was good. I found four dresses. Four Only dresses. Two of them are for me. Carly said the prices for clothing they weren't bad. They had some resellable ones, but it looks like they buy pallets or like wholesale because a lot of it was new attacks. Yeah, they did have a lot of new attack stuff, even, the sh even a lot of new attack shoes. They had a lot of new attack crocs. Really? But they were all like 40 to 50 dollars. But I won't keep you guys waiting. I'll show you the receipt first. So we paid $47.00, which I'm telling you, it's like steel? a steelio. Um, I did have a 20% coupon to use, so they were tagged at 55, brought it down to whatever I just said, 47, but they were a pair of ugh, New Balance 4090s, 90s, sorry, 9060s. Get, get the laces out of there. New Balance 9060s in this like Castle Rock colorway. There's the sticker 55 um they are my size and i do have a pair of new balances on my like uh i i haven't talked about it yet because we haven't quite made it to the uh, origin story jordan ones which is the first thing we're checking off the list but i've started putting together a list of other shoes that i went in um in the collection and there's a pair of new balances on there i don't know if this is going to replace it <laughs> i might need to uh see what it looks like on foot what do you think they're a little chunky for you i think a little chunky but we'll see we'll see i mean maybe i'll turn into like a depop guy i'll start wearing these <laughs> and uh vintage t-shirts oh no. and oh no. baggy jeans why are you saying oh no that's literally how you dress you try to dress she tries to dress like a depop girl <laughs> deep down inside that's who she is uh, but i'll throw a comp up on the screen like with the box i should be able to get between like 150 and 200 for these so if i don't end up keeping them definitely a nice solid uh profit to add to the fun it's a good find so maybe this one i was a little bummed that we didn't pick up anything else i did drive quite a ways for these but uh you know, at least the, the video wasn't a complete bust. You know? I found stuff, so that's... Yeah, she got stuff. It. it was worth it. So definitely the find of the episode, these New Balance 9060s. I'm not super familiar with this model until finding them today. I did find them in like new condition, as you can see the bottom there. They did come with the box. I tried these on, they fit amazing. They're super comfortable shoes, but I gotta say, I don't think that these are gonna be the New Balances that I end up adding to the collection. Uh, mainly just because I, I don't necessarily love the way they look, and the main reason is the heel. I don't know what's going on back here. When I had them on, Carly said that I looked like a dinosaur. So uh, I kind of agree with her. I don't think that I'm going to uh, going to be adding these to the collection, but I did list them up for sale. I got them posted at uh, $170 plus shipping, I believe. So if these sell for that price, that's gonna be a really good addition into the sneaker fund. But I gotta say guys, we've come a pretty long way on our journey to starting a sneaker collection, beginning with those origin story Jordan ones, after that Plato's closet trip and all the sourcing and sales that we've had since last episode, we're sitting at $1,018.36, which again, this is the first time we've been up over $1,000, and that's a pretty good budget when it comes to putting a sneaker collection together. I was just doing a little research a little market research, see what it's sitting at. And the uh, the origin story Jordan ones are actually down a little bit. I don't know if it's gonna focus in on that, but they're currently the lowest ask in my size is $775. Plus, you know, I gotta pay shipping and fees on top of that. So uh, probably around $800 to purchase them right now. And I've got the money in the fund. Uh, but if I purchase them, I will only be left over with about $200. So I've got a, uh, I've got a predicament here. I, I know the $200 can get us a long way, but I, I really wanna keep the ball rolling. A lot of you guys had the idea of thrifting and building the inventory and the fund as, as quick as we can, and I think an $800 hit 
uh, would, would slow us down a little bit because there's definitely some more shoes that I want in the collection. Again, I haven't released the final like list that I'm going for in the series. So if you have any recommendations, definitely, definitely leave those down in the comments as I'm still putting it together. But I don't know. The Origin Story Jordan 1s are a pair of shoes that I've wanted since they released. And I really honestly never thought that I'd be able to afford them. So I, I don't know. Part of me, my heart's telling me to go ahead and make the purchase. My brain's telling me to hold off. Uh, but I'm, I'm about 90% certain on what I'm going to do. So uh, if next episode of this video is released, hit this thumbnail and you'll find out what decision I make. Uh, but until then, I'll see you guys in the next episode. I didn't buy the Jordans. I know, I know I had the money there. I, I should have bought the shoes that we've been working towards over the past couple months. But around the time I edited last video, I saw through Instagram and YouTube, a lot of the people that do like Nike clearance reselling, posting a lot of the fines that were coming through the Nike outlets. And one pair uh, kind of caught my eye. I remember seeing it as it released, but as I think I've mentioned in the series before, I've never really been someone who spends a ton of money on shoes just because I'm, I don't know, I'm just kind of practical. And even right now, now that I am working towards the origin story Jordan 1s, which is an $800 pair of shoes, and I technically have the money for it right now in the sneaker budget, I still feel like it is an expensive pair of shoes. It's a huge expense. It still seems uh, like an irrational amount of money to spend on a pair of shoes. And I've always felt that way. But there's a pair of shoes that I didn't buy upon release for the reason that I just mentioned, but they made their way into the Nike outlet stores and I've noticed that a few stores even have them on sale well under retail. So I figured we'd hold out one more episode, we'd go hit a few thrift stores, try to build the budget up even higher, and while we're out, pop into a few Nike stores to see if we can find the pair of shoes that I'm searching for. I'm not gonna spoil it right now, you're gonna have to watch to the end of the video to see if we actually find Find it. And if this is your first time catching this series or your first time stumbling across my channel, basically in this series, what we're doing is going to mainly thrift stores, trying to find some underpriced sneakers that we can resell online and use that profit to fund a sneaker collection, starting with, as I mentioned, the origin story, Jordan ones. We finished up last episode with a little over $1,000 in the sneaker budget. So what we're doing today is a looking for a pair of shoes to add to the collection and B looking for some profitable shoes that we can continue growing our fund with. Now, this idea definitely is not my own. I've gotten the idea for a collection series from a few other of my favorite YouTubers, Seth Fowler, Retro Rick, and Phoenix Resell all have collection series that I'll link down in the description. Seth Fowler has a couple seasons of basically what we're doing exactly right here with shoes, building up a sneaker collection. So definitely go check that out. But with that being said, let's hop into some thrift stores. Although there's no cart confidence. Yeah, no cart confidence for me either. <laughs> Fifteen dollars. These leather Uggs. I feel like that's a pretty good find. Adirondack. I think the model is. It's Nike Golf. Sixteen is probably too much for that model. What we got here some more high top Pohans. I think these are the ones I heard last time. Twenty five is too much. Some red, white, and blue Converse for sixteen. We actually flipped that episode. Episode one or two. One of the first sales of the series but we did not pay $16 for them. Um, all right, looks like, uh, looks like just the Uggs to start. Got some uh, Nike Shocks Gravities, but they are $25, a women's size prop, not worth it. Got a pair of Nike Air Monarchs, 20 bucks. Goodwill always prices this model of shoes up. I don't understand. What do I see here? KW Shoes, <laughs> Kamado Tanjiro. It's just some knockoff, uh, knockoff Jordans. Interesting, $12.99. Still pretty sick though. They're very cheaply made, but the design was there. Got some future lows, $25. They're in really good condition. They are a five wide. It's not a great size. These Nike boots. 20 bucks, probably. It looks like it's like a men's six or men's seven, so probably not that size. All right, definitely a quick stop. Only grabbed the uh, Adirondacks. Only paid $7.50. We had a, uh, a little loyalty coupon to use. So, um, 
that's uh that's the uggs for the day that's that's good will let's hop into the nike outlet just drove here in an absolute downpour but decided to uh kind of clear up right as we got here but uh we're starting off with the nike clearance store um you ever had any luck here what's the best thing you found here a uh, pair of limited edition soccer cleats that i sold for 400 dollars and i paid 60 bucks for them and i found a penny that's heads up it's gonna be a great day <laughs> it's gonna be a great day let's go um hopefully we find some 400 dollars soccer cleats that'll be nice um, if I find the shoes that I'm looking for at this store, I'm not buying them because I want the complete box and this store is basically just one big hash wall. So, uh, let's see what we can do. What's up? I don't see a discount. I don't think there is one here today. I'm going to check my size first. Ten and a half. See what they got. Oh, these are the, the golf shoes that they have so many of. Uh, unfortunately, they're 150. And here's the uh, Ambush. Are these Ambush uh, Air Force Ones? These are pretty sick. If I can get this Bruh. out of here. That box just completely destroyed. All right. It looks like this one's uh, not going to show you guys, but there you go. Ambush Air Force Ones. Cool to see. What size were they? 10. A little small. We got some 11 golf shoes for $100. Again, I don't think there's a discount today. Pair of uh, Nike Blazer Low Sakai's in a ten and a half with this brown and red colorway. I'm hundred dollars, not a bad price for these. That's crazy. Um, I really like this colorway. If this was a complete box, I'd think about it for the collection. But only looking for stuff to resell right now. We've got some Vapor Max 2021s, hundred dollars. Got here Zoom Street Flies, eighty bucks. We got some blazer mid premiums. I don't know what this colorway is. It kind of looks like spray painted up. It was only $25. Like that seems like a pretty good deal. They got a couple pairs of them. 25 bucks for blazers. Let's see what size we got. We got a 10 and a half. Are they both 10 and a half? Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna think about this one. Music got a little loud in these sections, but there was a few pairs that were nice to see at the outlet, but I passed on like these Dunk Highs for $100. Pretty cool colorway, but in women's just really wasn't worth grabbing. And then same situation with these Jordan 1 Mid Crafts. I think these were $110. And that's really about what they're selling for on eBay, even brand new with box. And there was these Jordan 2s. I can't remember what the collab was. It was some artist, but uh, they're 100 bucks, not worth grabbing. All right, definitely left the clearance store empty-handed. I wasn't really expecting much there. This is like the store that the resellers live at. So um, it's it's kind of tough to go through, especially for you know someone that hasn't been here in forever. So uh, we're probably gonna go to a few Nike stores. They still have the clearance racks in the back of those stores. So we might find some good stuff there, but. That's the plan. So far, nothing. We were right across the street. Couldn't really help ourselves. Make it quick. <laughs> New Balance 501s for 13s are pretty clean. I like the colorway. Some Allen Edmonds Margate. Kind of rough condition. And 16 bucks. Probably, probably going to have to pass on those. Saucony, I think these are like shadow somethings for 14. This color is pretty sick. Men's nine and a half. That's probably probably a car. Some waffle ones, I think waffle ones. Oof, they are pretty worn on the bottom. 13 bucks, but yeah, with that wear, I'm gonna have to leave them. I just saw these Air Force Ones over here too. 15. I think they're they're probably a grade school size. Let me check the tag. Oh no, they're a women's seven and a half. Uh, 14, heel drag. Uh, probably not, probably not. <laughs> These are so cute, six bucks. Nike court forces probably. Probably not worth reselling though. What are those? <laughs> What are those? $20. I wanted to look them up. Would you pick these up a little over there? How much are they? Okay. Where's the rep? Let me see. Eh, I'll let you have those. I already have a pair of this. It's actually not listed. That's some CrossFit Nano, like, ones. Nine bucks? Yeah. That's for you if you want. And then those clothes are pretty clean for 13 sure they are. Nice. She's like doing restocks like a while. Just put them up. <laughs> um, these Saucony Shadows. Those Supers? Shadow 5000. Yeah, go check them out. 
stronger than <laughs> They're dry rotten. These might be too. And just some new balance. These are Echo? Interesting. It's a new one for me. All right, she, uh, she restocked a little bit. Found another pair of those uh, New Balance 501s, this time in pink, same model. Um, and then two pairs of these Nike Epic Reacts. Both of these are only $10. And they are, I believe, both a women's size seven and a half. So solid size, nice color. Um, now we gotta figure out once again how to split this up. All right, odds are probably fake, but we got some $50 Christian Louboutins. Um, did you look at, I, this isn't looking great. Did you look at these? <laughs> <laughs> They're real, dude. All, all yours. All right, Chris was kind enough to uh, let me have the three that I was interested in. He took the other four, I think. Paid $35.44. Two pairs of Nike Reacts and those Clo Clove nursing shoes. So, uh, quick little Goodwill stop was pretty good. Now I think we're headed to another Nike. This one's got two pairs of the uh, Blazer Low Sakai's full size. Run. I'm kind of liking these for 99. They have maybe these are all nines. They got a ten and a half. That one might be a grab. I still like this color, but I feel like this one's more practical. We've got two colors of the Ambush Air Force Ones, and then all three colorways of the Undefeated Air Force Ones. I, I'm not a big Pat Mother guy, so these are not for me, but still pretty cool. The um, the entire back wall is 30% off, so maybe we'll find something back here. I do really like these uh, Sakai waffles. This colorway is clean. Got the burgundy and black. Just feel like the uh, the blazers are nicer. Feel like I'd wear those more often. And plus, these are full retail, 170, no discount. Really leaning towards a pair of blazers. Not gonna lie to you. Oh man, both of these colorways are clean. I just feel like, man, I don't know. I'm torn. Cause I don't really have any shoes that are brown. I feel like a nice brown pair of shoes would uh, would be nice in the collection. But I mean, black is just it goes with everything. Got some Air Force Ones, eighty. Oh, these were refurbished too. They are a little used. Not terribly used, but definitely used. You having fun? No. Okay, I need your opinion on something. They have four different pairs. They got the uh, waffles and they got two pairs of blazers. I want to know what your favorite ones are. Okay. You got these. These brown blazers. And the black blazers. Ooh. What do you think? What are we You're picking? One of the four? Yeah, these all good. So the reason I'm leaning more towards a pair of these is because these are full retail at one seventy, and these are ninety nine dollars. Right. Are you gonna like be able to match that though? That's that's the thing. That's a difficult. That's a difficult task. Yeah, I'm kind of leaning towards the black ones too. I think that's gonna be it. The black ones are the one. That's the one. All right, store number what is this three on the day? Let's see what we can find. Still a pair that I'm hoping that they have at one of these stores. I'm gonna let the suspense continue to build though. Oh, they had another color at this one. This is, this is what I'm looking for. These are the shoes that we're hunting for. Got the Cause XX right there. Oh, and they're on sale. 115. There we go. They got the 10 and a half. Oh man, these are so clean. 15 and a half. Definitely copying this. Definitely grabbing. Oh. Got it. Yeah, these are hideous, but they have so heavy. So many. You see this? So many of these off-white. These are Air Force One mids, right? Yeah. Yeah. So ugly. But I, could I mean, they're still cool to see at the outlet. Still <laughs> <laughs> Also got those off-white Air Force Ones in black. It's pretty cool. They are 185 in giant box. So 185, 30% off. No the women's, they got a ton of these. Like, what is this, wheat? Vachette Tan Tongue Guys. Pretty nice colorway, but they are 109 plus the 30% off, so like 80 bucks. Not bad price. Probably a little over what they're going for on eBay, to be honest. Uh, they got a few pairs of these Nike Day Breaks. $34.97, so it's like 25 after the discount. I think it's worth looking up. I offered them to Chris, but he's he's over it. There's a reason he offered them to me. <laughs> 
Today was definitely a huge success. We didn't find a ton in terms of like resell value to add to the sneaker fund, but we definitely found the pair of shoes that I was hoping to find at the Nike outlets, the Cause Sakai Blazer Lows. Now, first off, I, I love the box design on these. The other Sakai Blazers just came in some like standard orange boxes, but the I love how they, they have the Sakai on top with the Cause Xs over the Sakai. Uh, but for those of you guys that don't care about the box, the shoes, I don't think I've ever mentioned this on the channel, but my favorite color is actually purple. So this is actually a, a fun addition to the collection. They are gonna be kind of hard to style. I'm not gonna lie to you guys because they are kind of out there, but that's the whole point of the sneaker collection. We're getting we're getting shoes that you don't see every day. It's a collection, right? So here's a good look. I don't know if the, uh, the white is going to over expose on the camera, but here's a good look at the Sakai uh, cause blazer lows. I think wearing this with like a yellow shirt since it's got the yellow laces and that yellow tongue um, would actually look pretty nice. So picked up these Sakai blazer lows. We also picked up the pair in black as you saw, but I figured if I was adding a pair of Sakai blazers to the collection, it wouldn't make much sense to add two of basically the same silhouette this early in the collection. So went ahead and actually returned the black pair to the Nike outlet. So we're adding the $106.49 that we spend on those back into the collection because surprisingly there wasn't much resale value on them even at the price we paid. I think that the black pair was only like right around $100 even, uh, which is surprising for what they were. It's, it's definitely shocking to see how much the, these shoes have gone down in value, but I still got a really good deal on the uh, the cause that I picked up. It was actually my birthday month when we were out shopping, so I had a 10% coupon to use on top of it. So I don't know if you can see that there, but I ended up paying just right over $103 for them. So they were already on sale for 114, took the 10% off. I think that's a really good deal. A great pair of shoes to add to the sneaker collection this early. Again, we're going a little out of order, but we're working our way up to those origin story Jordan ones. And then as for the uh, the resellable shoes that we found at the Nike outlet, it, was, it wasn't a complete bust, but it definitely wasn't the greatest uh, sourcing trip to the Nike outlets. Only picked up one pair of shoes. Uh, we got, this is another one that I think is gonna be way overexposed in the camera, uh, but these Nike D-Brakes, I got them in two sizes, a women's size eight and a half and a women's size nine. And these were $35 on the rack. There was 30% discount on top of that. Plus I had that 10% coupon to use. So these came down to $22 and two cents for brand new Nikes. Uh, that's an absolute steal. And we actually sold a pair of them already. I still have the eight and a halfs, but I sold the women's size nine and those sold on eBay for $63 and 42 cents. So after shipping and fees profited just at $20, which is a great profit margin in my eyes for a pair of shoes that uh, didn't need cleaning, just basically need to take pictures and get listed. And they sold really quick. So a $20 profit, that's pretty much what I look for in my normal reselling business is an average sale price that profits me $20 per sale. But with that being said, we haven't talked about our sales that have rolled in over the past week or so. So other than the Nike D breaks that we picked up in this episode, we're going to kick it off with the best sell of the week. If you caught last episode when we went to Plato's Closet to potentially add the New Balance 9060s to the collection, I told you guys I wasn't really feeling them. I decided I was going to go ahead and sell them. We paid like $47 for those and they ended up selling for $152.75 over on eBay. And I do wanna clear something up because there is a little confusion with what I'm saying things sell for. And when I say an eBay sales price, uh, that's factoring in shipping and taxes and all that into the sale price. So eBay's sale price is gonna be a little inflated versus say Poshmark and Mercari, just because they, they work a little different. So if I say something sells for $39 on Poshmark, like we sold the Nike Experience 14s, those sold for $39 on Poshmark. The buyer pays the shipping on top of that. And then I'm only subtracting fees when we talk about how much I'm adding into the sneaker fund later. But with the eBay sales, I have to take both shipping and eBay's fees and the seller or the buyer's taxes out of that, but I'm calculating all that into the fees. So what I'm adding into my sneaker fund is accurate. It's just when I'm telling you guys what things are selling for, some of the eBay sales might seem a little inflated. But with that being said, we also had several other sales roll in. The Animal Crossing Pumas. I've sold these things 
I think three or four times and the buyers haven't paid, but we finally had a buyer pay. We sold those for $72.51 over on eBay. We sold another pair of the UFOs. The camo ones went for $70.75. We finally sold the toddler Air Force Ones back in the video where we found the Nike Dunks at Goodwill. Those sold for $30 even on Poshmark. We actually already sold the UGG Adirondacks that we found in the beginning of today's video. Very surprising how fast those sold considering it's the middle of summer and they are winter boots but those went for $63 definitely uh, a lower end price I think I listed them at $99 but when I got a $63 offer on a pair of shoes that I paid $750 for in the middle of summer considering their winter boots I definitely accepted that so those went for $63 on Poshmark I sold the Nike Air Max 90s that we got from the bins the last pair uh, from our Ben's haul last video, everything from that haul already sold. The Air Max 90s went for $29 plus shipping on Mercari. And then our last sale of the week, the blue Cole Hans that we got from Burlington for right around $30. Those sold for $68.20. And then adding all of our gross sales together, over the past week, we've done $588.69 in sales. But on that, like I mentioned, we had to pay shipping and fees. The total for the shipping and fees was $175.54, leaving us with $431.15 to add into the sneaker fund. So even with us adding a brand new pair of shoes to the sneaker collection, we are still up $200 in the sneaker fund over the beginning of today's video. And honestly, I've been talking about the origin story Jordan ones for seven episodes now. I'm tired of waiting. I'm tired of keeping you guys waiting. I think, I think it's time. Today we are unboxing the origin story Jordan 1s, five years after their initial release, and I actually got these shoes completely free. Well, kinda, but more on that later in today's video. I purchased these shoes on GOAT. This is the first time I've ever purchased a pair of shoes on GOAT. This specific pair of shoes has been my grail sneaker since the day they released, but paying $200 and more for a pair of sneakers has never really been in the budget, and paying over $800 still feels really weird for for a single pair of shoes, but like I said, these are the sneakers that I've been dreaming of purchasing since the day they were released. I found the toddler pair at my local flea market like two or three years ago for $10, and this, this sucker's been sitting on my shelf ever since. Now, a little on the shoes before we actually break into the box. In my, in my opinion, this is the best sneaker collaboration of all time. Growing up, uh, my family was never the one to buy me brand new Jordans. Every time they released, I'd go to school, see everybody rocking the new Jordan 4s or the Jordan 5s. I think those were the two main silhouettes when I was growing up, but I, I never had those. The best day of my life was when my parents finally bought me a pair of Jordan CP3s from Hibbit Sports. So this is a little bit of a, a surreal moment for me. But one thing that doesn't cost a lot of money to be a fan of is Spider-Man. And to this day, Marvel and Spider-Man have been a huge part of my life. So seeing them come together Together for these sneakers was absolutely insane and actually having them in hand right now again is just a surreal moment so without rambling on anymore let's get into the actual unboxing like I mentioned I paid I think $853.60 on goat for these sneakers um, I'm just now realizing that I didn't bring a knife or anything uh, luckily I mean kind of luckily the box was like kind of opened over here so I think we'll just like rip the tape off um, like this it is interesting to me. For those of you who follow the channel, you know that I'm a uh, I I'm a shoe reseller. Not really these kind of shoes, just more your everyday like uh, thrifting shoes, which is kind of how we ended up getting these shoes for free. But again, more on that in a moment. But it just it kind of baffles me that they don't bubble wrap or protect these shoes at all. But without complaining about something that's not really that important, um, the box is in mostly good condition. You see this over here. There's a little uh, banged up spot on the corner, but other than that cool packing paper. They come in the standard Jordan 1 box, which is fine. I wish, I wish I could get my hands on the promotional box. Basically just have the uh, Spider-Man logo on the top here and more of a Spider-Man themed box. That would be really cool, but uh, I think that those are going for over $2,000 now. So I opted for the, uh, the regular box. Now, before we take these out of the box, there's one little thing that I'm concerned about is the translucent outsole. Since the shoe is five years old, I'm curious to see how they're kept. I mean, obviously coming from GOAT, they're brand new in the box. I, I just don't know how, not necessarily yellowed, but how discolored that outsole is gonna be. So we're gonna, we're gonna find that out together. Got a little GOAT 
Assurant Authenticity paper here. Uh, just some standard, standard wrapping paper. <laughs> These things are crazy. And here's a good look at the shoes. The, the outsoles actually look to be in really good condition. As you can see, they are a little discolored around the edges, but honestly, for a five-year-old shoe, I think that these things look amazing. The leather is pretty good. I mean, I wouldn't say that they're the best feeling Jordans that I've ever had. They're definitely um, better quality than a lot of Jordans that I've held before, but the leather on these is immaculate. As you can see, they are basically a Chicago Jordan 1 silhouette with a few minor changes to uh, pay homage to the movie that came out. One, they have the blue translucent outsole, which is, is weird because Miles Morales did not wear shoes with the blue outsole in the movie. Are those my Jordans? I can't help it if we're the same size. It's just the shoes that came out with the movie. They have the blue tab up here. And then the biggest difference is the little dots that are going along the red leather on the shoe. The dots are there to symbolize basically the way comic books looked. Actually, I pulled out a comic to give you guys a close up the best I can to show you what the, the dots look like in a comic book. Basically, it's the way that the when the comics were printed, the dots were there to give it depth. So that's what those dots are there for. That's that's really just a really cool touch, in my opinion. Other than the blue tab up here, they do have the blue insole with the red nike air logo they still have the laces attached to them so they come standard with the black laces here but they also have these red laces with the blue shoelace tips or or aglet i think that they're technically called this one seems a little bit more discolored around the heel but honestly nothing crazy um, i'm gonna be wearing these things anyway so they're gonna get a little dirty i do kind of wish that they didn't go with the translucent because i know that this is going to get uh, really dirty really quick as you can see with the the toddler ones that I have they're basically brown but overall amazing pair of shoes I think that I'm going to try to get my hands on the the second edition of this shoe that just came out the across the spider-verse Jordan ones I might be going for those next in the sneaker collection series which is what this video is a part of this is the first shoe that I have come across in my sneaker collection series but I do I really want to get the new across the spider-verse Jordan ones in hand to compare them they're a lot more wild a lot more out there but I do love the simplicity of this one just a little bit more I'm looking at the the swoosh here and it's also got a little bit of the dotted the dots going along the inside and then it's got like a patent leather outlining around it i just think these are super clean pair of shoes like obviously they're a classic silhouette with the chicago jordan one but just the little accents to just like give it the spider-man touch with the blue up here and the the comic book dots i know a lot of people don't love having the dots on the shoes but i think that it's a nice subtle way to you know show the show that it's a it's a spider-man shoe it's it's meant to be a comic book collaboration but it's not anything too crazy it still is a classic chicago jordan one and I, I honestly cannot wait to wear these things. Now, as I mentioned, uh, I got these shoes 100% for free and it took a little bit of effort. This video is not the last installment, but the last installment of let's call it the first season of a series that I'm calling Into the Sneakerverse. The title is obviously paying homage to the Spider-Verse Jordan 1s that we are, that we just worked our way up to. But I've paid for these shoes using no money out of pocket by going to thrift stores like Plato's Closets, Goodwills, places like that in my area, mixing in like Nike outlets and retail arbitrage places like Ross and Burlington to try to find underpriced shoes that I can then clean up and then sell online for profit. And that's what this whole channel is based around. This is actually the first sneaker unboxing that I have ever done, but hopefully there's gonna be more to come because this is just the first pair that I'm adding to the sneaker collection that we are building up from the ground. Because as I mentioned earlier in the video, I've never really been super into collecting sneakers just because it's been a little bit out of my price range. But if I can get them for no money out of pocket, then I am more than happy to become a sneakerhead and finally get my hands on some shoes that I've always dreamed of having. This is still, a surreal moment just having having a pair of shoes like this in my hand like this is an $800 pair of shoes I still feel so weird paying that much money for these shoes even though I technically didn't spend any money on them but I have documented this whole process from day one with basically no money to put towards the sneaker collection and now I've worked my way all the way up to these so if you guys want to check out the entire series starting on day one I'll throw a link up in the top corner of this video so you can go watch that and like I mentioned this isn't the finish line to the series we are just getting started on an entire sneaker collection so let me know down in the comments below if you could have any pair of shoes in your personal sneaker collection let me know down in the comments what that shoe would be 
I'm just trying to look for some inspiration to add to my grail list of shoes that I want in my sneaker collection. I'm taking a slight break from this series, but we're going to come back strong, hopefully going to have a 15 pair list of shoes up to this caliber that I want to add to that collection again with no money out of pocket. So again, let me know down in the comment what that shoe would be for you. Check out the rest of the series and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys in the next video.